Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today is big day, episode 40 of the podcast. Can't believe 40 episodes have flown by like that. We're going to be taking you all the way around the association, going to be hitting some of the uh, top highlights, top stories that we wanted to cover um, from the past couple of weeks here in the NBA. Also going to be giving you all an in-season tournament update as that is starting to wind down. I think every team only has one or two two games left to play um, before the, the bracket is finalized for the in-season tournament. And they're going to start getting into the, the bracket portion of that. So excited to, to roll through those standings for all those groups because we got some surprises. Some teams who are sitting atop of their group that I'll be honest, I did not know. We're going to be playing this well, not even just in the in-season tournament, but in the regular season as a whole. We're going to get into all that. And then on the back half of the pod, as always, we're going to be giving you our NFL rapid recap, um, bringing it for the first time this week. We're going to be going through our top performers in the NFL this week as well. Um, big week in week 12. A lot of big stats were put up both on both sides of the ball. So going to go through all of those as well. <clears throat> and lastly, going to wrap up with some blind rankings in both the NFL and NBA. So those are going to be fun. Um, with a little sneaky little draft at the end as well. So stay around if you want to see us put together some of the content for, for the shorts and the TikToks. But um, going to get the housekeeping out of the way, as always. If you are on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Y'all have been going crazy recently with the engagement um, on the, the shorts, on the, the shorter post videos. Um, so we appreciate all support as always. So continue to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. If you are on audio platforms, be sure to go ahead, pre-download the show, and give us a five-star rating. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it like we always do. How we doing today, Dame? How, how we feeling about episode 40, bro? <clears throat> episode 40, big episode. I'm excited. I, we talked about it beforehand. I, just, I feel like we, we haven't recorded in a while, so I'm, uh, I'm very excited. We got a lot to talk about, so I'm ready to get into it. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So we're not going to not gonna waste any of y'all's time. We're going to go ahead and get right into it, starting off with the in-season tournament standings. And that's going to kind of weave into some of the teams that I know um, that we want to highlight here on this kind of around the association episode that we've got. Um, so the first one we have here, I want to go ahead and start. Um, and let's just start with Group A out east, um, because that's going to highlight one of the teams that I would like to, to cover for sure. And that's going to be the Indiana Pacers who are sitting at 4-0 and oh and have already clinched this group. So they are going to 100% be heading into the next uh, round of the in-season tournament, which is going to be that knockout bracket. And the Pacers are playing at a historic rate right now. For those of you all that have not caught a Pacers game this year, first of all, what are you doing? Where have mm -hmm. you been? You got to watch it. Second of all, just got some of their stats pulled up here. They're sitting at a 123.6 offensive rating this season, which is good for first in the league, but not just good for first in the league. That would be the highest offensive rating in NBA history by three points. Like if you if you go through the list after, like we're talking about separation of like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, like no, they're clear cut significantly higher than the pack. So they're playing at a historic rate. On top of this, they actually have the third worst defensive rating. So mm -hmm. historically good offense near the bottom of the league in defense. Despite that, their net rating is still tied for top 10 in the NBA. As bad as their defense is, their offense is actually just that much better. And it's still keeping them in the top 10 in the league in net rating. Um, they're the fastest team in the league. They're number one in pace this year. And that is driven by a guy who I'm going to go ahead and call him a system right now. I know that the, the talk about being a, a system in the NBA has been big around the league since the James Harden comments. But that is all based on the, the, the play of Tyrese Halliburton, who is sitting at 25 points, 12.1 assists a night. He has almost a five assist to turnover ratio turnover ratio which for a guy who has the ball in his hands as much as he does is the primary decision maker for this offense who is makes like like no joke some of the most ridiculous passes on a night in night out basis for him to have that good of an assist to turnover ratio is absurd um and again the pace i've never seen a team 
who it looks like even when they're just inbounding the ball, it's a fast break. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> like the other team will make a shot. It's a fast break. It doesn't matter. It literally they're doesn't running. matter. So I just want to spend a little time here to talk about the Pacers. What have you seen from this team this year that has impressed you? Because I know I, I think we both probably had Tyrese Halliburton and like our breakout players earlier in the year, but I almost feel like we undersold it. Like, I don't know that I was expecting it. And I was like, he could sleepwalk to, to 20 and 12, but he's putting up 25 and 12. And he had, he's had multiple 30 point games. His efficiency is ridiculous from deep. Like he is playing at an all NBA level and is putting together a case to be in that position where he is in the, one of the top point guards in the league conversation. You can't have that conversation right now without him. Oh, yeah, not at all. Then that's really been the main thing. Like you said, he was in our breakout candidates. I think he might have been even on the thumbnail of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, it wasn't like, Jesus Christ. Like, he's (laughs) blowing all the expectations out of the water. Like you said, 25 a game, 12 assists. But the main thing is, like, the turnover ratio. It's like, bro. Crazy. Wasn't there like a three game stretch where he had like what it was like 12? He had like 30, no almost like 40 assists with zero turnovers over like a three or four game stretch, bro. Like you said it already for someone who has the ball in his hands that much and is the primary decision maker, that's nuts. <laughs> like that is insane. So, like, he's making great decisions, like you said, they're fast paced, they're running up and down, and he's still like scoring the basketball wise. Like, well, he's shooting what 40, I think it's 45 percent from three on like. <laughs> if you round up like nine attempts a game, yes. like, bro, that's insane, bro. Like the, the the shot creation is insane. Being able to set his whole team up is like he's doing everything at an elite level right now. So that's to me, that's the main thing. That's the main difference. Um, Obviously, a lot of the players are playing well, like they shoot a lot of threes. Like you said, it's fast paced, running up and down. But like he is the, the focal point of it and he facilitates everything. So right now he's playing great. Um, And that's really been the main thing because he's playing at like a all NBA caliber level. And that's p- what's propelled this team to, you know, have one of the best offenses of all time. Like as far as statistics go right now. Yeah. Rick Carlisle has notoriously been a, like a very hands-on coach. He likes guys to kind of buy in. He's, you know, is a, a very hands-on guy, but it feels like he's changing his philosophy in the sense where they're playing so free and you can only pay play at the pace that they are if you're playing this open and free basketball. Right. Um, and like I said, they, the pace that they play at, it doesn't matter whether they're literally on a fast break or not. Every single play looks like a fast break. Um, they are intentionally play really aggressively on the perimeter, on the defensive side of the ball um, to let guys like, you know, Jalen Smith or miles Turner have ch- chances to kind of rotate over try to protect the rim, but even if they give up points in the paint, which they are, that is their game plan. It's like, look, we're going to play you tight. If you beat us to the rim, you beat us to the rim. Whoever scored the bucket is not going to get back on defense. It's literally impossible. The ball is moving faster than they can run. Mm-hmm. So there, it's always a numbers advantage, always a numbers advantage. And it is it causes so much confusion because you have guys – and like no fault to them. It's like you typically the ball gets inbounded. Okay. Everybody's trying to match up. You're here. You're here. And it's like, before you even figure out who you're guarding, dude's shooting an open three in the corner. How did he even get down there? Like, you, <laughs> right. You just scored a layup and you're at half court trying to get back on defense. And the ball is now coming back to you. Like it, the, the pace at which they play at is, it's really insane. So I got to give a lot of credit to, to Rick Carlisle again, like really letting these guys play free, letting Tyrese Halliburton really, expand his game and just play really basketball that we haven't seen at a pace ever. Like Mm -hmm. they are putting up historic numbers this season. Um, Buddy Heald again has been shooting the ball like crazy that game against the Hawks. Like I, I don't know that I've seen a back and forth game. Like defense didn't exist in this game. And that's not to say that (laughs) people weren't playing defense, but it looked like an all-star game with the shot making that was going on on both sides. Like Buddy Heald, I think had 24 points. Um, he went six for six from three. And I think he probably hit four threes in the, like the last three minutes of the fourth quarter alone. All of them were ridiculous shots, like tough spot ups um, off the dribble stuff. Tyrese had 37 in that game. 
Trey Young had 38 in that game. He went five for eight from three. He had multiple threes from the, the freaking logo. Like, dudes were just going back and forth with crazy shot making. Um, and they ended up scoring 157 points to beat the Hawks despite giving up 152 points. So that is that game. If you if you need to see what Pacers basketball looks like this year, just go back and you don't even have to watch the whole thing. Just go watch the highlights of the Pacers Hawks game. That will tell you everything you need to know. Yes, they're going to give up a lot of points, but they're going to play fast. They're going to score more points than you. And that is how they plan to beat teams. And it's working for them right now. Um, they are sitting, I think, at eight and five on the year, right? Uh, nine and six on the year. But again, mm. they are four and oh um, in their group in the in season tournament, have clinched that group, which included both the Cavs, the 76ers, and the Hawks. Um, so not the easiest of groups, but they've beaten all three of those teams um, and beaten Detroit as well. So they are going to be moving on to the next round of the in season tournament. So shout out to Tyrese Halliburton, who I went back and watched, I think, a short that we cut up after the the breakout player episode. And I was like, man, he could put himself in a position to be that that guy that's just outside that Steph, Dame, and Luca tier. And, like, I don't know if I thought it would be this fast. It's almost consensus at this point. Like, Mm -hmm. he feels like he is playing at a legitimate all-NBA level. It's going to be very, very interesting to see how the all-NBA teams shake out now that they're positionless. Yeah, and he's kind of like doing his own thing as far as like, like the way the way we look at point guard now, right? Even the top point guards in the league, where well, we got Steph, Luca, Dame, those guys aren't like yeah, twelve assists, like high assist number guys, like traditional point guard. It's like Tyrese Halliburton is the main guy. That's like obviously he can still score the basketball like mm-hmm. with, with the best of them, but he's like like I said, it's facilitating for everyone. Like that's, doesn't he lead the league in assists right now by like two per night? Yes. Yeah, so it's like traditional point guard, but like a modern version of the older point guard. Like it's right. it, it's so cool to see. And like, like I said, the fast pace are running up and down. Like, listen, like I said, if you haven't watched the Pacers game, just watch Pacers game. Bro. It's just it's so entertaining to see. So that yeah. part stuck out to me, too, the fact that it's like he's doing all this, like scoring the basketball, shooting very efficiently, but he's still giving you 12 assists a night. I got to ask you, do you like his three-point celebration? That's all right. He does. He does the little. Like it's down cool. the court. I wouldn't do it, but I mean, like it's cool. It ain't like I've seen worse. I think well, what's the names is worse. I don't like the the Malik Beasley, the 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 shake. I don't like that one. To be honest, what? The what? Oh, I you know. never you ever seen oh, where he yeah. like yeah. I don't like that one. So I mean, I've I'm seen not, worse. I feel like it fits Tyrese though. Um, I feel like mm. that fits his personality. <laughs> um, so I, I can get with it, but but yeah, like you said, if you haven't been tuning into Pacers game. Tune into Pacers games, bro. You're missing out. Mm. Um, gonna go ahead and keep it out east in Group B. The Bucks are now sitting at three and zero atop the group. Um, they are, I think, play. Let me pull up their schedule, but I think they play. The, okay, yeah, I must. I knew they played the Knicks or Miami um, to wrap up their in season tournament play. The Knicks are technically still able to. Um, qualify to win this group um they would have to blow out whoever their next opponent is um they play charlotte so i guess not impossible (laughs) um but they have a lot of ground to make up in terms of point differential so feels pretty safe to say that milwaukee is probably going to run away um with this group and qualify for the next round of the in-season tournament um and they've turned their their slow start to the season around they are now sitting at 12 and 5 um rattled off a lot of the a lot of wins. I think they're like probably like eight and two in their last 10, something like that. Um, had a like a 25 point comeback win against the Blazers in, in Dame's first game against Portland um, since now being in Milwaukee. Um, they're putting it together. It's not always the prettiest, but they're getting the job done. So, so shout out to Milwaukee. This is what we were expecting from them. Guys have been in and out of the lineup for them, but at the end of the day, they're getting it done. Um, also, Brooke Lopez put up a career high in points the other day. It was like 39 um, or something. It's something crazy. Like at his age to be putting up a career high. I wonder, I, I know this is a super random stat, but like, what do you think the oldest player to put up a career high is? And it can't be like, I'm not talking about some guy who's like, oh, his career high was like eight. And it's like, oh, he puts up like a 12 point game. Like somebody who was a legitimate scorer, like when they're like 36 or 37 mm. breaks their career high. 
it's tough, bro, because like those old stars, career highs are so like. Can you think about right. it? Like Kobe, his career high is eighty one. Exactly. So like even that yeah. sixty point game wasn't breaking his career high. So like yeah. that, that's actually really interesting. I don't even know. Like, like even a guy high. like LeBron, like no way I think he can break his career. His career high is gonna it's be like sixty close. something. Yeah, sixty one. It's, it's like it's like sixty one or sixty two. I thought didn't yeah. Jamal Crawford have a fifty ball when he was older? He did, but that might not even have been his career high, which is the crazy part. <laughs> That's actually yeah. That's that's interesting. The oldest yeah, okay. player to break their career break their career high, but it got to be like got to be like forty plus. Yeah, it's, it's got to be a threshold. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can pull up his career high points. Hey man, um, Donis Haslam, Donis Haslam, who in his last yeah. game? You never know. See, he put up he put up fifty two in two thousand seven. So it's like even though he had that whatever. Oh, he had fifty one in that game. Damn, he actually was one shy. Dang. Okay. That's interesting. I don't know where I could even attempt to find that statistic at, right. but I would be interested to know because Brooke Lopez is 35, 36 out here dropping almost a 40 piece on people, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but shout out to the Bucks. They're definitely putting it together, um, getting the ship righted after what was looking like a little bit of a rocky start for them. Um, yeah. But Giannis has definitely, definitely been turning up for them. Oh, I think he's sitting at 30 points an hour in the year, at 30 points a night, yeah. 30, 10, five assists, a steal, a block. He's doing Giannis things. We know, well, you know what you're going to get from Giannis. Dame looks more comfortable now. Brooke looks good. Uh, I know Chris Middleton is dealing with an injury right now, but hopefully he gets a little bit more acclimated into being that, that third option there. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and we get to see the collision course that we were hoping for of Celtics and Bucks in the playoffs because now that they're playing good, good. This is what I'd like to see. Yeah, 100%. I really think it was – they need time to, like, you know, mesh. I, I, all the time with, like, a new team that makes, like, a big move in the offseason, especially bringing out, like, a star, you need time to, like, get a feel, Um, especially in this situation, like, Damian Lillard's playing, I think, for the – yeah, not I think. I know for a fact the first time in the mm -hmm. NBA where he's not the best player on the team, and he can't just – I mean, he still has free range, but, like, he can't just take whatever shot he wants. You know, Giannis is going to get his – um, so just finding that, finding out that, finding out the rotations, um, things like that was kind of, I see why they got out to a slow start. Um, I still have some concerns really, as far as like on the defensive side of the ball, but I mean, at least now they're playing better. They're pulling out some of these close wins because these games aren't like, even though they've been winning some of them, they aren't been like easy games. Like, like you said, they had to come back in one of them. They had to win a couple close games like recently too, as well. So credit to them for actually pulling it out and actually winning those games. But, um, it's not like. They're just going to coast right now. They're still got to work out some kinks. They got to get healthier. They got to get the rotations down. But like I said, at least for now, like we, you didn't want it to be a disaster to where like, oh, we thought it was going to be this huge thing, you know, Bucks Celtics. And then come to find out the Bucks aren't as good as we thought. So I'm glad they're actually, you know, making steps in the right direction. Yeah. And before we move on to the next group, because we've now touched on both groups that feature the Pistons and the Wizards, I got to say. I am disappointed in both of those teams, not because I wanted them to be – not even want to be. I wasn't expecting them to be good teams. I was expecting them to 100% be lottery teams. But they're not even fun to watch, mm. bro. Like, I've tried multiple times now to put on Wizards games. It, it is tough, bro. I turn hard. it off every time. <laughs> I, I, I can't make it to – I could make it like a quarter or two, and then it's like – it's just – all I want to see right now from the Wizards, what's Bilal doing? How Bilal looking like? <laughs> Outside of that, bro, I really don't care. Like, and it's, my it's, no it's no disrespect, but it's like, bro, I really thought we was about to see Jordan Poole going crazy. <laughs> it hasn't been a pool party. That's what I was about to say. It hasn't no, not the, been the a pool, pool party, It's dry. Empty. That's just closed. It's You're closed right. for the winter. <laughs> that pool is closed. <laughs> shut down, bro. Oh, it's sad to watch. And then on top of that, like, I'll say for the Wizards, like, yeah, okay, I'm a little disappointed. More so, like I said, I was expecting Jordan Poole to at least be fun to watch. At least they have Bilal starting to look like he's, you know, being that elite 3 and D type of guy. Um, and I hope they don't cap him at just a three and D type of guy. Like he's so athletically gifted and he's still so young and moldable that they should, bro, y'all have nothing to lose, right? Y'all are two and 14. 
Start experimenting, bro. Let him play make. Let him create. Let him dribble. Like, let's really let him develop multiple aspects of his game instead of just point of attack, defense, and catch and shoot threes. Because we know he can develop to be good at both of those areas. Like, allow him to do more. I'm more disappointed in the Pistons because not only is this a roster that is at least they've been together, like their core has been together longer. Like this Wizards team is like blown up from last season. This is year three, technically year two for Cade, right? Like obviously he was hurt most yeah. of last season. Um, this is, you know, Jalen Duren's second season. Killian Hayes been there for a while. Jane Ivey's second season. Like I'm expecting to see progression. That progression is not going to make them a playing team. I'm completely aware of that, but. This team looks bad, and it's it feels bad because Cade is starting to suffer because of it. Like, not even just his on-court performance, but, like, I'm starting to see fans make that turn of, like, ah, were we too high on Cade? Which, A, is unfair, again, because this is really only, like, his second season. I'm saying this is too early because y'all did this with Scotty in year two, and now, look, he's looking great. So, like, A, give it time, but B – Bro, what do you want him to do with the spacing on this team? Like, Cade nice. Cunningham is not no elite perimeter shooter. Like, he lives at being a whatever he – like, 6'6 six, six or 6'8, six, 6'6 um, six, six guard who can use his frame and his body to get downhill and, like, work out of the middle range, get to the basket. Like, so you need spacing for him to do these things. But Monty Williams is continually running lineups with – and it's no fault to the, like Asar, but like he's not the best shooter. Killian Hayes, who we know is not a good shooter, like and you obviously have whoever's running the center at that moment, whether that's Jalen or Isaiah. Like, there's a lot of negative shooters on the floor for your point guard to be Kate Cunningham. That is a problem. So there are moves that need to be made, not to necessarily make them a contender. Like that's way too far down the line, but to get them to a point where you can like develop him properly, develop this team properly. Cause you're really hindering them right now because of the way this team is constructed. And I still don't understand the Jaden Ivy, Killian Hayes stuff either. Like it gets too many minutes, bro. Killian Hayes gets way too many minutes, bro. Jaden Ivy is coming off of the bench. He's a lottery pick from last year. He was a it's starter for most of last year granted like i said cade was hurt but and you know what what's hayes changed is. you know what killian hayes is so it's like what is the whole point of i don't know i don't get that but to, to me it's the exact same thing that you said it's really the fact that the roster is not in a position to where Cade can develop based on his skill set like right too many non-shooters on the court so how do you expect this guy to have the space to work and like you know to get to the basket get to his spots if the paint is if everything is clogged if you have if you don't have to worry about like two three people on the court at one time and then himself is already not the best shooter so it's like right how 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 do you even expect him to you know develop or like produce when that's the situation he's kind of put in and it's kind of tough because it's kind of like that with a lot of like younger players especially like highly drafted players i mean obviously you're going to a bad team but the rosters aren't constructed in a way that you could even, even if you guys are losing, at least like show signs that you're going to develop in this way. Mm -hmm. And that's also why I agree with you, why I think it's weird how people are like not out, but like starting to feel that way when you don't give guys fair shots. Like, and this is with across sports, bro. Like people be get, get put in horrible situations. And then when they suck, it's like, Oh my God, he's a, like with Bryce young right now. It's like, bro, I was just about to go there <laughs> as the Panthers owner. Right. There's no way you watch what you saw on Sunday and then say, yeah, I'm going to fire the head coach and the running back coach, and that's going to solve our problem because our O-line can't block because none of our receivers can separate. And even if they do, they're just not good. This is not a good receiver room. It's not, bro. So it's like you can't, you can't take a guy, put him in a bad situation, and then call the guy a bust or, like, are starting to question the guy when it doesn't work out, like, I think people also get too, like, blinded by those guys that can come in and overcome situations, like Luka Doncic. It doesn't matter what his situation is. Like, he's going to put his numbers up. He's going he's gonna to do his thing. Mm -hmm. Like, not everybody is that guy. Even if Cade is, like, you know, can be a superstar, 
not everyone is the guy to where like you put them in any any situation they're gonna produce it. Not right. everybody's like that. So you give him an actual competent roster around him that suits his skill set, and then I guarantee you it'll be a lot better than what's going on right now. Exactly. And again, look, credit to Asar. Like I think Asar is playing at a phenomenal level right now. Like he's shown elite defense for an NBA player, period, but especially to be a rookie. Like the tools that he has, I'm very excited to see what Asar looks like in year three or four. Cause like we might again be looking at a guy who I don't even know if it's just like he might not just be a consistent all defensive team guy. Like he could be a defensive player of the year type of guy. Yeah, it's elite. Um, because of his defensive impact in multiple phases of defense, like not just at the point of attack, but him being able to be a pest off the ball, be in passing lanes, protect the rim, like mm -hmm. rotate over as a help side guy. Like he does everything at a very good level. So young, it's only going to get better. Um, but yeah, look, and the other thing again, that people have been getting on Kate on is this assist to turnover ratio. Cause like he's averaging seven assists, but he averages almost five turnovers a game. Well, yes, yeah, tough when every time you drive teams are throwing three and four bodies at you because mm -hmm. we're not concerned about killing in this I, corner I'm say, who or are you in that you? corner like <laughs> it don't make it, sense bro it, it, we, we gotta like contextualize box scores and like you have to understand that okay this is what like okay this is what the stats say but if you're watching the games if you go back and look at what's happening it's it, there's nothing that Cade can do here. It's not the most ideal situation for him. So yeah, he's going to have a lot of turnovers because to get to his spots, teams are going to throw a lot of bodies at him because they're not concerned about the shooting and the spacing on this Detroit Pistons team. And so that's why I'm disappointed in them because I was just expecting some type of progression. Again, I wasn't saying that they're not going to be a lottery team, they don't have the talent to be much better, and that's okay. That's where they're at in their rebuild. But to be in a spot where you've lost the thir 13 games straight, bro, this team should not have lost 13 games straight. And I'll, I'll shoot it fair because same thing. Spurs is on a 13-game loss streak. Honestly, if you're in the NBA, you should not be losing 13 games in a row, bro. Nuts. 13 games straight, you can't get one win? Come on now. Teams is not even taking you seriously. You can't like sneak a win. Like you can't like <laughs> can't steal a win off of somebody. Like people know you suck. Like they come into right. the game like yeah, we got the dub. You can't like catch somebody lacking. It's crazy. Yeah, thirteen in a row is and like again, like you said, a lot of these are against bad teams. Losses to the Bulls and the Trailblazers. Bulls again. Uh, they're getting blown out by any type of decent team they play. Um, 30 point loss to the Raptors, a 26 point loss to the Pacers. They play the Wizards tomorrow. That's going to be the toilet bowl. I'm actually excited to watch that. One. That's the first, <laughs> first Wizards game. I'm, I'm excited to see because somebody got to go off, right? Somebody got to win, bro. They're going to, yeah, somebody got to take the dub. If I watch this game and everybody just shoots bad, they're going to be so. <laughs> 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 oh, I can't. I can't. They. I, I'm actually excited to watch that game purely because it's. It has to be a funny game. It has to be funny. Yeah, it's, so like, it's like the, the, the bad basketball versus bad football, bro. This is that's the because I've seen a lot of comments in that video talking about some like, bro. Bad basketball is at least funny to see. We gonna see. Right. <laughs> I want. I want to see Jordan Poole do some wild 360 crossover combo and shoot some crazy shot and air ball. Like that's right. what. I, at least I could chuckle. Right, at least some that's, that's somewhat entertaining. Yeah, so, that's all I'm looking for out of that. Do you have faith in in either of these organizations and the Wizards and the Pistons to like not turn around this season, but like eventually make stuff right? Because these are two organizations that's known for like just being bad. So the Wizards, I don't know, bro. The Wizards is interesting again because it's like this is so raw and early in their rebuild, where it's like they just tore this they tore tore this last year's team down couple of months ago like yeah um so i feel like it's a little too early to call there but like you said they don't have the best track record because when you think about it you have a big gap after john wall and bradley bill and you got a big gap before john wall <laughs> and bradley Beal. there's a lot of times where his team was not in a good spot mm -hmm. um and it's not like this is a, a new organization so they do not have the best track record 
Um, for the Pistons, bro, I hope, bro. Because like I said, the t- there's t- so much good talent here between Cade and Asar and Jalen and Jaden Ivey. Um, and even um, Isaiah Stewart, too. Like Marcus I mean, Sasser. Marcus Sasser, yeah. Right. <laughs> like, there's a lot of talent here. Y'all just have got to get the puzzle pieces that fit to get them developing right and just like turn it around. So I'm I'm hopeful as an NBA fan they get that fixed because I'm I, I'm a big believer in Cade. I still am um, because I've seen what he can do. And they bro, we're just coming off of the you know Team USA at the the FIBA World Cup before they went when they were playing the select team. And those are talking about Cade Cunningham was dogging Team USA. Mm-hmm. The talent is there, bro. So sure. they got to get the pieces around him. So I'm hopeful that they can sort it out in Detroit. Yeah. Last group in the East, Group C. Um, another one that is still technically up in the air, um, but would, would require the Celtics to beat the Bulls by, I think, 22 points or more um, to be able to leapfrog who is currently sitting number one in a team that I have a lot to talk about on, which is the Orlando Magic, who are now, I think, tied with the Suns for the longest uh, win streak currently in the NBA. Um, The Suns actually might have overtaken them last night with their win against, um, oh, no, the Magic won yesterday too. So, yeah, they, they both have won seven in a row. Um, but the Magic have beat some really good teams as of late. Mm-hmm. They've got wins over the Bucks, wins over the Pacers, wins over Denver and Boston. And it was a big win over Boston, 113 to 96. And what is really working for this Magic team is defense. Okay. This team is defending at a high level. Level They are third in defensive rating, only behind Minnesota and Houston, who we've both talked about multiple times now on the pod um, for how good their defense, is, their defense has been this year. Um, and they're only .2 in defensive rating behind. So they're right there neck and neck with both of those teams. Mm-hmm. Um, they're averaging the second most steals per game as a team. They're also giving up the second least second chance points per game. So it's a credit to guys like Mo Wagner, Wendell Carter, even guys like John Isaac who are crashing the glass for them. Um, they're fifth in total net rating this season. And again, a lot of that is due to their defensive rating being so high. Um, and a couple of guys that I have to shout out specifically on this Magic team who have been making big contributions. First one, Jonathan Isaac. He is third in individual defensive rating, I think, for guys who have played like average over like 10 or 15 minutes a night. Um, he's averaging 2.2 stocks per game, so that's a combination of steals and blocks in just 13 minutes a night. Uh, so if you translate that to per 36, that would be 2.4 steals and 3.3 blocks. So he is getting it done on the defensive side of the ball. Um, he's a guy who can crash the glass in their game against the Celtics. Um, He was big time for them on the offensive glass in that game, had a lot of second chance opportunities um, that he either finished or brought down um, and got extra possessions for the magic. Um, And then Jalen Suggs is his most efficient season um, he's had in the NBA this year. I've seen people start to throw out the comparisons to a guy like Marcus Smart. I've seen it everywhere. I'm not going to lie, bro. I see it. He is getting scrappy. He's diving for loose balls. He'll get switched onto a big and he's battling. It's there's no easy buckets if Jalen Suggs is guarding you. Um, he's sitting at 12 points a night, four rebounds, and two steals in just 27 point, uh, 27 minutes a night. Um, and he is actually, um, I think this just came out today. The estimated plus minus um dunks and threes puts this out. Uh, so shout out to them. He's actually leading the league an estimated defensive plus minus per 100 possession. So that is ahead of guys like Chet Holmgren, Scotty Barnes, Evan Mobley, uh, Dylan Brooks, Mitchell Robinson, John Isaac, his teammate, Jaden McDaniels, Brooke Lopez. So a lot of elite defenders on this list. He is above all of them in defensive estimated plus minus. Um, and I say all of that about their defense because you have that on top of the strides that Paolo has made this year, that Franz have made this year, 
their comfortability comfortability playing so versatile, being on the ball, off the ball, despite sometimes the lack of spacing that this team has, um, they're able to still get to their spots and score and play make for others um, and just be extremely versatile wing uh, players, one of the most versatile wing duos. I think it's fair to say that now um, for the two of them here in Orlando. Um, And guys like Cole Anthony and got to also shout out Franz's brother, Mo, who I think he's probably the best backup center in the league right now. Like he is putting up some yeah. legitimate stat lines, bro. Um, it's like he's sitting at yeah, almost 13 points a night, um, four rebounds, you know, half a steal, half a block. But he's had some games this year. Um, like if you pull up his pull up his game by game log, 27 against Boston. Um, he had a 16 point game against Indiana. I think that was an in season tournament, or no, it wasn't an in season tournament game, but 16 against Indiana. Um, And their win, he's had a couple of different 19-point games. So he can come in on any given night and give you 20, 20 20-plus. And, again, crash the glass, like I mentioned. So this Magic team, the defense is what's elevating them on top of their continued growth from their stars in Paolo and Franz. So shout-out to them. It looks like they're going to wrap up Group C, barring the Celtics absolutely blowing out the Bulls. Um, and even if that's the case, the Magic have a good shot to potentially be um, one of the wild card teams if that does happen. So, so shout out to Orlando. What have you seen um, from this team this year that that you think has really contributed to this jump for them? Because now they're sitting at. Um, let me pull up the standings real quick. But I they're think second, they're like twelve and five. Yeah, they are. They're twelve and five, second in the East, making that push, bro. Yeah, they're a legit team. That's the thing. Like, they're actually, you know, it's not like fluky wins. They're a legit good team. The main thing, like you said, the biggest thing, and like you pretty much said everything, is the defense. Um, But the thing that sticks out to me is like their size, balls, and their length, like, and their versatility on the defensive end. It's like, all right, you got, you got Paolo, you got Franz, you got Jalen Scuzz, who's not tall, but like he's still, you know, a good defender. But then you have Jonathan Isaac, a guy who's like, I don't even know how tall he is. What is it, like six? Six eight nine I think. like six, six yeah six, like six nine, eight six yeah. nine like just a lot of a lot, a lot of length a lot of versatility defensively so the fact that they have that like you said one of the best defenses in the league and still have um the talent that they have on offense um like you said a guy like Paolo I believe he's shooting what I just had it pulled up he was shooting forty three percent from three right now which is like nuts <laughs> like yeah. if you actually can like keep that up that's <clears throat> insane mm-hmm. um you got him you got franz like you said one of the most versatile like duos right now and then you got guys guys contributing like i said Jalen like offensively i believe he's having a really good like um shooting season as well mm-hmm. along with the defense that he brings cole anthony is also contributing like they got a lot of guys who contribute on the offensive end so you pl- add in the the great defense plus you know everyone contributing on the offensive end and the strides that they got that their best players are making that's a really good team. You know what I mean? Like, that's a great team. And, like, at the end of the day, defense is going to win you games, bro. Like, to me, if you're a really good defensive team, like, you got a shot to beat anybody because, you know, especially when you have length and you can put multiple different bodies on other teams' best players, like, that goes a long way to a long way to me. And then, bro, if – let's say Paulo, because right now Paulo's in year two. If he takes another step, which he probably will because, mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, it's year two. If Ron takes another step, like, bro, they're – this team is legit right now, so I can only imagine, like, next year, the year after. Like, that's a scary, like, core, you know what right. I mean? Because they're all they're all young. So, yeah, mm-hmm. they're, they're 100% a legit team. Like you said, they've beaten a lot of good teams, too, which also, like, kind of solidifies them a little bit. Like, they're not mm-hmm. beating up on bums. They're beating up on legit teams. So, I'm excited, man. Like, coming into the season, the Magic was one of the teams I definitely wanted to watch more of. And they have not disappointed. Like they're a really good team. They're fun to watch, and I'm I'm really excited for what's going to look like moving forward. And on top of that, like you said, them being so young, you still got Anthony Black, Jet Howard. They're going to continue to develop and get mm-hmm. better, um, and can eventually join kind of that core rotation later this year, next year, whatever the case may be. However, that time frame works out. Mm-hmm. Um, so this Magic team is sitting in a good spot. I'm going to say something, and I may be gassing a little bit, but in some ways they kind of feel like baby Celtics, which is weird to say because yeah. the Celtics are young too to an extent, but like two big wing players who are the you know the faces of the franchise 
Um, you've got some scrappy guard play. You've got a center that can stretch the floor um, or at least kind of attempt to stretch the floor. How many threes is Wendell putting up a night? He had three threes a night. Like, you know, he gets his threes up. Um, and you've got just guys who buy into their role. Like, if I wasn't talking about the magic and this was just whatever blank descriptors, like, that could sound like the Celtics to you. Mm -hmm. um, so, in a way, I, I feel like they've kind of stolen their blueprint, which fair, good for them, because you have the, the personnel to do it. It's a great blueprint. <laughs> All right, if you're going to steal a blueprint, at least steal one that gets you to the NBA Finals. Facts. Um, and potentially could end up winning them a championship. So, definitely, definitely shout out to the Magic, a team that I wanted to highlight for sure, because they've been hooping, bro. They have been yeah. hooping. I like, yeah, I, just, I love the position that they're in, because they got, we're already this good now. Like, I can only imagine, like, <laughs> imagine if Paolo takes another step. Jesus Christ, this team is going to be scary. <laughs> It's going to be crazy. When he gets in that mode, like, I, the comps have always been, like, this weird mix of, like, Carmelo in some ways, but then also, like, a guy like Julius Randle because he's a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. It's like, I feel like that's a very accurate – I mean, comps are only going to be so accurate, I guess I should say. But like, That's the closest one that makes right, sense to me. When you try to conceptualize, like, if you really molded those two players into one player, like, Paolo seems like a fair – like he has the ability to be a little bit shifty, he can handle the ball, he can ISO you up, he can get you in the post, but he can also bully ball you. Mm -hmm. Like I, I like it, I like it, and like you said, he's only gonna get better. So, it's Magic team that like they might have arrived now, but they're gonna get better next year, year after that. Uh, this East man, this East has so many good young teams in it that we're talking about the West being a juggernaut. We gotta meet your point where it's just like, bro, everybody in the NBA is hooping. <laughs> Everybody's just, bro, we talked, listen, we talked about it before the season, bro. No one besides like the Wizards and the Spurs, like no one was like coming into the season trying to lose. Like right. everyone was playing for something. So these young teams that are like breaking out, like, yeah, it's a great surprise, but it's like, that, what, what, what are we trying to lose for? We got our young core. Let's go win. Let's go try to compete. So it's exciting. Definitely going to pivot to the Western groups in the in-season tournament, starting with group a, your Los Angeles Lakers are four and O oh and have clinched the crew out West. So look behind in, I don't even know how, how do you, what's a, what adjective would you describe LeBron with right now? I don't, I feel like we're running out old. Of he oh nah, but he's he's hoping, I, bro. Honestly, bro, I don't even know what to think about the Lakers sometimes, bro. I, like I watch the Lakers games, bro, and sometimes I don't even know what to expect. But I, I like the way Bron is playing. You know, he's playing like I don't even I just, I don't know what he did to still be at this level this old. It does not make sense. Kevin Garnett said he got he got something that ain't been released to the public yet. Oh, and I bro, might I agree with it. him, bro. <laughs> I believe he got, it. he got some stem cells, something. I don't know <laughs> what he's putting in his body. He must got one of them ch them chambers that's in Dragon Ball Z. Hook himself up to the mask and just Fact. generate, bro. Because I don't know, bro. He's he's way too old to be putting up numbers like this. I mean, when you think about it, it's, it's kind of funny because people like, bro. He talked about like uh, putting a million dollars every year into his body, his recovery, like his diet. Everything has been and it's been on point since like so early, and he kept up with it. I guess these are the results when you combine that with like an athletic freak. Mm -hmm. I guess that makes sense. But yeah. still, what he's been able to do is kind of nuts. Um, and I think it's funny because people are like, "Oh yeah, keep saying you're 21." It's like, bro, because this is not normal. Like we wouldn't right. keep saying if, if if it was normal, bro. It's not normal. But um, that. Come on with the fact, I mean, we've we're getting killed by injuries, bro. I think right now we're missing what Gabe Vincent. Yeah, I believe Rui's hurt. I think mm -hmm. Cam got hurt. Uh, I think we're missing someone. I can't remember, but we're getting killed by injuries. Vando's still out. Vando, that's the one I miss. Yeah, yeah. Vando's hurt. So, like, the fact that we're kind of 4 0 in the end season tournament is hilarious because. <laughs> Ten came and down seven to, on the ten and seven on the regular season, but they undefeated in that in season tournament. Listen, LeBron man, said he's not playing around. He want that five hundred k, bro. He he want that five hundred k. That you know he's you know savings. he's stingy with the yeah. money, bro. He that junk going straight to with the money. That junk going straight to his savings. <laughs> he's chilling, bro. But mm -hmm. so yeah, I don't know. In season tournament, we be hooping. Outside of that, sometimes we struggle. 
Um, but I, I really think a lot of it is injuries too. Like we haven't had our full team and we haven't been able to get the right rotations down. Like we're playing guys who normally wouldn't get a whole lot of minutes. You know, they're stepping up playing, playing decent, but four and oh, that's all I can say, bro. We, we're, going, we're going for it all. We're about to win the whole thing. Hey, it's very possible. Like I said, they've already clinched their group. So they are joining the Pacers um, of the teams that we've covered. I think actually, yeah, them and the Pacers are the only two teams which have clinched their group and are guaranteed to be into that bracket round um, in the, the second round or second part of the, the end season tournament. Um, the Suns are a good candidate to make it as a wild card team in the West. They are wrapped up with their play in the end season tournament and they are three and one with their only loss, obviously coming to the Lakers. Um, but they have a pretty good point differential plus 34, um, which I think that actually may be like second or third best um, across all of the teams. Fourth best, it looks like. Fourth. Um, right. And all the other teams that have higher differentials than them are in first place. So really looks like they have a good shot to make it as the wild card team out west. Um, let's head down to Group B in the West um, again, which is still possible for the Rockets to jump from second to first, but will require a very large win over Dallas, who is now actually mathematically eliminated along with the Nuggets and the Clippers. Um, so uh, the Pelicans are in front in Group B, sitting at three and one. Their only loss coming to Houston. Um, so Houston still has, like I said, one game left against Dallas, um, but the Pelicans look like they're going to advance from this group. Like I said, barring a, I think the Rockets would have to beat the Mavericks by 18 plus, which I mean, I guess is possible, but just again, doesn't seem super likely. Um, and this Pelicans team, they've been interesting, man. It, they just, injuries just bug them so much. And this one is like, it's still so unfortunate, like the whole CJ uh, situation with the collapse along, like you can't even, that's not even an on court thing. Like that is just bad luck and prayers to him that that, you know, all gets resolved, you know, safely mm -hmm. and everything. But it's, it's somebody is always hurt and like remove Zion from that equation. Like BI is missed time. Alvarado missed time to start the year. Trey Murphy is still out. Like, they just can't have their whole team together and healthy because we talked about it. The roster construction is here. Ain't nothing the GM need to do. Sorry. It's just got to be healthy and play together. Um, and so they were sitting at just over 500. They're sitting at nine and eight on the year, but they are three and one in the end season tournament. Um, and I actually want to ask you this question. It's, it's been a little bit since the quote came out, um, but they, they asked Zion about how he feels about the season. And he said that he is still trying to buy in to this team and the style of play that they're doing in New Orleans. Um, do you have some level of, of concern or, or panic for how he's answering that question? Because it feels like that's that's a little intentional, right? Like, yeah, you like, know, the trained answer would not say that you would not just be like, yeah, I know I'm still trying to buy in like, bro, this is like year four. You like gotta that, be bought in by now. Yeah, like that part, I don't really, I don't really understand, like why you would say that unless there was some sort of behind the scenes, like just some sort of like, I don't know if it's full on tension, but just like, I don't. There's something going on. Like you don't say that for no reason. The right. only would say that is if like, um, like say you guys aren't playing to the level that you know you're supposed to be playing. Maybe you made a big change. Maybe big roster change. Like. None of that's really happened as far as, like, a huge change. It's really, like you said, guys just need to get healthy and all play together. So if it's not that, I don't really know why you would kind of say that. Um, so it's, it's definitely some level of concern. I, it's not full-on panic, like, at all. But I do think it's, like, something to keep in the back of your mind a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because when I heard it, it was kind of like a – doesn't – like – you don't like to have people's quotes be out of context, but like there's no context for, context where that sounds good, or I guess right. it doesn't sound bad. Like you should be bought in by now, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I hope they get the health situated when Trey Murphy comes back. Hopefully, you know, CJ will get back and healthy because when they're healthy, we've seen what this team is able to do. 
Um, and they've even got younger guys, guys like Dyson Daniels been stepping up for them. Jordan Hawkins, bro, he is shooting the ball. Like, I mm. like Jordan Hawkins. It feels like he doesn't feel like a rookie in the sense that I don't know if it's Willie Green or somebody's really giving him the confidence to have the green light, but, but he's pulling it from deep. He's shooting like seven or eight threes a game. He's shooting like 37% from three. The shot form is buttery. It's fluid. Um, he's going to be a very, very good NBA player for a long time. Um, and so it's like they, they have guys. They got guys that just got to get healthy. Um, but, but yeah, they're, they're sitting atop this group. Like I said, Houston has a chance to, to leapfrog them. But every other team in this group, Nuggets, Mavericks, Lakers, all eliminated from the end season tournament. One group left to get through, and that is Group C, where nothing is officially locked up yet. Um, the Kings are sitting at 3-0 and in this group and have one game left against the Golden State Warriors. Um, and the Timberwolves are sitting at second in this group at 2-1. and one. They have one game left against the Thunder. Both the Thunder and Spurs have been eliminated from the next round of the in-season tournament. Um, I want to talk about the Kings for a little bit because De'Aaron Fox is going crazy. He has been going crazy uh, this year. I know he was hurt for a little bit, but since he's been back, he's putting up basically 30 points a night, um, six assists, 4.3 rebounds. He's shooting 48% from the field. What I think is most impressive um, is he is a career 32% three-point shooter. He is shooting 37% from three this year. If the three-point shot is falling for De'Aaron Fox like that, unguardable. What yeah. are you supposed to do if you have to step up on the perimeter to a guy who's that fast? That was his and main thing. You could back right. up. You can't if you can't do that. It's wraps. If you go back in the, the last game, I really locked into a Kings game. They, they played Minnesota in the end season tournament, which I think was last week, and they won that game. Um, they kind of put it to Minnesota, especially in the second half. Um. De'Aaron Fox was just, I'm talking, it looks like a blur, blowing past people because you have to respect him on the three-point line. So the, the the combination of that with having a guy like Sabonis who's so skilled and crafty um, and Mike Brown who, I, I think he was in an interview and said they ran the same set like 10 or 11 times in a row. Like I'm talking like almost a half-court screen from Sabonis um, with a second guy to come up and screen Sabonis's man. And a lot of times that just resulted in Darren Fox blowing past the screen to the rim every single time because you're giving him a runway from basically the logo to the rim. It's way too much for him to accelerate. Um, so this Kings offense is is firing on all cylinders. Um, I, I'm happy for them because um, there was some talk about, you know, maybe last year. I mean, we even had to talk about, you know, potentially being a fluke. They're still sitting at nine and six on the year. Um, like I said, they, they did have some injuries early on with De'Aaron Fox and he missed some of those games, but I'm excited to see um, this game. I think it's Thursday um, or no, tomorrow, sorry, um, against the Warriors. Um, like I said, it's going to be the last end season tournament game for both of those teams. Um, and the winner potentially could, uh, that game could decide the winner of this group. We know what they did in the playoffs last year between those two teams. That's basically going to be a playoff game. Um, yeah. I know the atmosphere is going to be crazy. It is, let me double check. I think it's in Sacramento. Oh. In Sacramento. So mm -hmm. you know they're going to be going crazy. Gonna they're going to want to light the beam. Um, so I, I'm really, really excited for that game. Um, but what have you seen from, from Sacramento or De'Aaron Fox or, or Sabonis or anybody else on that roster this this season that, that's got you excited? Well, honestly, the, the thing I really wanted to talk about with them was, and it's kind of, it's not unrelated, but it's just it's something a little bit different. Isn't it crazy how in the NBA, I like put it this way, De'Aaron Fox is in year seven, and he's having, you know, a career year. You know, he's breaking out. He's actually, you know, shooting well from three. Like I said, if that falls, he's pretty much unguardable. Bro, it's crazy to think that a guy could be in, like, year, like, five, six, and not be in their prime yet. It's like dudes are coming in young, bro. Bro, he's only 25. <laughs> like right, he's our age. Like, bro, like he's been in the year seven or been in the league seven years. Like, 
It's not, and it, I say that personally because sometimes for me, I forget, especially maybe it's because like football is so different. I'm so locked into like football. Like, it's so, I'd be forgetting that guys can still elevate their games. And that was kind of the reason what we talked about with the Kings, like, or last or before the season, like, all right, last year, that might have been like, you know, it, you know what I mean? Like, that, not saying like that's just, that's just cap, they can't get any better, but what are the odds that, you know, that's a really good year? They have more injuries this year. They kind of stay where they are. People are not, people are like, expecting them to be good now so they might be a little mm-hmm. bit different if De'Aaron Fox like you just said could take this leap to be able to shoot the ball as well as he is and sustain it bro that's it takes the Kings to a different level as well like mm-hmm. it takes them to a whole nother level and then you still got to talk about guys like like Murray who can step up and develop and get better so it's like man that it, to me that was just like crazy to really see and like I always forget that like guys can still get better even a little bit later into, you know, their NBA career. So, to me, that's just nuts. But, yeah, if he can keep this up, the Kings are a scary team. Just st- strictly for the reason that, like, bro, you're, he's not going to be able to be guarded, bro. He's just too fast. Like, that's, it looks fake. It looks like somebody's playing around with fast forward sometimes yeah. when he's playing. And that's the thing. Like, bro, all right, cool. You could back up a little bit. You know, you're just going to have to beat me from out there. If he can beat you from out there, bro, I don't know what you do. I really don't. Like, the only thing right. that still concerns me is obviously in the playoffs with Sabonis. But regular mm-hmm. season-wise, winning games in the regular season-wise, they're, they're going to be fine. Yeah, and on top of that, you know, Mike Brown is a part of that Popovich coaching tree. Yeah. Uh, so they have those flashes where it's like, bro, the ball movement is crazy. Facts. And like we already said, all it takes to, to get those little mismatches or, you know, to get the ball swinging, is beating one person off the dribble and you might have the fastest player mm-hmm. in the NBA on your team. It's a lot of people that's going to get beat off the dribble and all of a sudden a swing turn into a swing, turn into a swing and Oh, that's an open three wide open three. Yep. <laughs> um, so, and on, on top of that, I, he's now sitting at, like I said, 29.9. That's good for fifth best uh, or fifth highest points per game. Um, just behind Shea, who's sitting at 30.4. Um, so yeah, De'Aaron Fox has been hooping. Kings have been hooping. Um, I think since he's been back and healthy, they have not lost. It. So they've only lost, I think, two games, and that was, I think, both to the Pelicans um, in back-to-back games. Um, but prior to that, they had been on, what's this, a one, two, three, four, five, six-game win streak. Um, so they're, they're going to be on a tear. Like I said, 11-28. They're playing the Warriors at 9 p.m. That could decide this group. Um, so definitely, definitely going to tune into that when that's a TNT broadcast. Um, also, before we get uh, and wrap up this, you know, around the association segment, I um, want to talk about an eliminated team in here, which is the Oklahoma City Thunder, who, despite being one and two in the uh, the in season tournament and eliminated from the second round, they're sitting at eleven and five. Um, on the season and are one game back of the Minnesota Timberwolves for the two seed in the Western Conference right now. Um, and a lot of that is due to the the fact that, A, Shea Gilders Alexander is unguardable. <laughs> He's Completely. unguardable. Completely. But Chet Holmgren is putting up 18 points, eight rebounds, 2.3 blocks and 2.5 assists a night. Insane. Chet, bro, Chet, right now, if the season ended today, it's an easy pick for rookie of the year. It's Chet. It's oh, an yeah, easy that's, pick. That's not even debatable right now. For me, he I think he's gonna have to fight the the media Wemby hype, which bro, is gonna be Nah, bro. I, I you honestly, know there's gonna be some, even if it, he keeps playing mm-hmm. like this. There's still gonna be some. I think he's playing at a level to where the hype cannot like, unless Wimby like just later in the season goes on a, like a tear, which he could for sure. Just goes on mm-hmm. an absolute tear, bro. It's the fact that it's the stats along with the impact on winning, and the impact he has on both ends of the floor, right. You can't snub this guy the way he's playing. Like, like I said, if Wemby goes on a tear, then yes, the the narrative and everything. But like, bro, he the impact is just insane, and it's clear as that. You can see it, and it's been off the rip. Like offensively, what he's been able to do, he's been able to space the floor. He can handle the ball a little bit. He can still pass the ball well. And on the defensive end, he's like a legit rim protector. 
to me, bro, it's not even like I said, it's not even close right now. Like he's playing at an insane level for a rookie. Let me ask you this then. Do you feel like impact on winning is something that should be considered when we look at an award like rookie of the year? Because so many of these guys are going to be going to teams that are bad teams. Why they're high, high lottery draft picks? Because if you're just yeah. looking at counting stats, Wemby is right there and ahead in some categories. Like he's averaging more points, he's averaging more rebounds, he's averaging more blocks, more steals, he's averaging more assists too. Like he actually is beating him out per game in every single counting stat. The Spurs just are on a 13 game loss streak, <laughs> and the Thunder are the second best team in the West. Um, so I see what you're saying, and like, look, I feel the same way. Like, I don't know that I should really factor in like impact on winning, but it's hard to separate that because at the same time, I could also say, well, Wemby is doing this on a team where it's like he is the guy. Chet yeah. is not the guy in OKC, as good as he's playing. He's at absolute best on any given night, the second option. And probably on most nights, not even the second option. He's probably the third option. Mm -hmm. And he's still putting up these type of numbers and that type of production with that. Um, so I, I don't know. I think it's it's a weird spot to be in. That's what I was going to say. It's just weird because of the situation. Like, I don't know. It's it's hard to really – like. To me, it just in general, if we're just talking about like, bro, listen, right now, if, if the guys have the same stats and one guy is helping his team be the second best team in his conference and another guy, to his fault or not, they're like the worst team, it's tough. Like, you got to give it to the other guy. But then again, like you said, it's hard because all of these guys normally are supposed to come in into situations where they all suck. So the impact on yeah. winning doesn't matter because everybody sucks. His situation is just different because, I mean, this is his rookie year, but he got to sit out the year. You know, OKC, like I said, they have Shea. They have other guys there. So it's, it's this one's it's just a little tough. It's just different. But, like, I'm just saying, right now, if I had to pick one, to me, it had to be Chet. So, but I, I see what you mean, though. The situation is just, it's hard to really factor that in when all these guys are supposed to come into bad teams anyway. Like, yeah. So it's a little bit tough. Yeah, it's tough. The way that I'm trying to, like, rationalize it in my head is, like, okay, yeah, their counting stats are – roughly similar like even though Wemby has a slight edge I'm talking like some of these are decimal points higher so it's like mm -hmm. we're not on some big difference in terms of the counting stats then it's like I don't want to ding Wemby for being on a three and 14 team but I do also want to boost Chet for that's being on say. a team yeah. that's playing at the level that there are and on pace to be like a 50 plus win team um, that, was, that was the main thing I didn't want it I'm not saying as a knock to Wemby I'm saying yeah. it more as to like credit to chat that's right. i'll put it that way that makes the most yeah. sense yeah i think that feels the most fair and look on nights when it's when he's he's got to step up and bring a little bit more to the table bro he hit the shot to send that warriors game into overtime mm -hmm. shea had 40 chat had 36 yeah <laughs> like he, he's right there I see, um, he's stepping up yeah, and like you said, the the unicorn abilities flash so often, bringing it up the court, the handle, being able to dribble drive, the shooting. I think he's – let me double-check how many shots or threes he's putting up a night. Four. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Like, that is a lot. Four a night. That is crazy in your first season. It's nuts. <laughs> and do you know what a big part of it is? What? The – Thunder have – oh, my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. Now I have to Google it because I don't want to – let me not disrespect him. But they have the Spurs old shooting coach, Chip Englund. Um, he was with the Spurs for a very, very, very long time. They brought him in in 2022. He was like – that was like, bro, if you need a shooting coach, like that is the guy. He was with the Spurs for a long time. Um, and I – I'm pretty comfortable in saying, like, from the work that he's done in the past, Chet is shooting this good, and a large portion of that is due to a guy like Chet being his shooting coach. Um, getting just – it's sometimes, bro, it's just little small tweaks that you have to get with a guy's shot to mm -hmm. make it more fluid, to make it faster, to get off uh, more consistent on the release. That's something that a lot of the best shooters talk about, just having a form that's easily replicatable from multiple positions. Um and that's something that he excels in. So I think 
the fact that he's coming in, he's shooting that high of a percentage. He's able to do all of the unicorn things. And like we mentioned, 2.3 blocks per game as a rookie. We knew the defensive impact was going to be there from the jump. It, yeah, it, he's my rookie of the year. I think you say he's your rookie of the year right now because he's ended today. Mm-hmm. Um, and, he, bro, this OKC team, man, they are special. They are special, and they're only going to get better. That's the cra- – all these young teams that we've talked about, you know, over this last hour or so, they're only going to get better. Like, there's still young guys who are going to develop. Like, bro, even Shea. He's only 25. Like, he could – there might be another gear for him to tap into. J-Dub, Kaysen Wallace, too. He's been putting on, um, you know, great defensive play as well. Even Isaiah Joe. Isaiah Joe is one of the premier sharpshooters this season. 50 – or, hold on, 48.5% from three this year. Bro. He's had had games where he's gone seven for seven from three. Like, just strapping it. It's the talent in the league, man. The talent in the league is crazy, bro. Like, it's nuts. But, like, it's so funny because, like, you have so many of these young guys that are hooping. Then you still got Bron, Katie, Steph, these senior citizens that still hooping. It's like, bro, it's just a lot. It's just a, it's too much talent right now, bro. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I was listening to J.J. Reddick's podcast where he had uh, Richard Jefferson and Tim Legler on, and they were talking about this exact thing. Um, Because when he had Adam Silver on, they were talking about expanding the league and adding one or two expansion teams at some point in the future. And JJ said he feels like you might have minimum like 150 to 200 players scattered throughout the G League or overseas who could be NBA players right now today. If there were slots for them, they would be on an NBA roster and good enough to contribute. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is – I don't disagree, like, that number feels high, but at the same time, when you really do think about it, like there are a lot of premier older guys who I know we talked about in the past, guys like DeMarcus yeah. Cousins, who even like like they have the opportunity to go play overseas because nobody's ringing their phone to come into the NBA right now because that need isn't there because the talent is just it's just that much more difficult to stay. Um, cemented into the league for a long time. And that speaks to the league getting younger and more talented at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, the league is in great hands. I think minimally, minimally they need to add one or two teams at this point. Because I think so. There's too much talent, like, on guys that are on rosters getting DMPs or no minutes, guys that are getting sent to the G, guys that are out of the league, like, that's the thing, too. I'm like, bro, I'm looking at some of these guys that get sent to the G League. I'm like, bro, he can't be on no – like, he can't make the roster? You tell right. me, bro, You can't tell me this dude can't make the roster, bro? But when you look at it, it's like, damn, he, he really – where he going to get minutes at? Like, over who? So, I, I see what you mean. I, one All or right. two, for sure, needs needs to happen soon. Yeah, it's it's crazy. League is in – league is in fantastic hands. Um. We are going to pivot over now, making that transition from the hardwood to the gridiron and going to get into all things week 12. But before we do, have to shout out SeatGeek, um, who's been providing us with the promo code and sponsoring the pod for a while now. Um, we're getting down the wire uh, in the NFL season here. Playoffs are coming not too far away, probably a little over a month. Um we're going to be looking at the wild card round of the NFL playoffs. Um, so if y'all are going out to these games or if you're going to anything else, MLS, NBA, I, I know MLB is over, but I'm sure there's other stuff going on. Concerts, like we said, SeatGeek has all of the events there on the app. And if you use code off the glass, you will get $20 off your first SeatGeek order. Again, that is all one word off the glass for $20 off your first SeatGeek order. Before we get into our Week 12 Rapid Recap, wanted to bring in a, a new little segment. We're going to talk about the top performers from Week 12. Um, so I've got some guys that I want to highlight here because big week, Thanksgiving week, a lot of big games, a lot of big performances on both sides of the ball that I want to highlight. Um, I've got a couple of guys. Uh, you want me to go first or you want to go first? You can go first. I feel like I always go first. Okay. 
first guy I have that I want to highlight in my top performers of week 12 in the NFL is Jordan Love. Jordan that was Love. One of my guys. <laughs> hey, he's been playing. He had a good start and then it kind of went downhill a little bit. He's turning it around. Um, his individual play has improved a lot. He's got the Packers in a position to potentially contend for the a wild card spot in the NFC. But on Thanksgiving Day, in a game where myself included, but I'd imagine a lot of people had the Lions etched in to win this one. He went out. He said, F what y'all think. F the predictions. I'm about to go who? 22 of 32, 268 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions, and 39 yards rushing. Big, big win for Green Bay on Thanksgiving against Detroit. Division rival in Detroit had that crowd stunned early on. Um, so, so shout out to Jordan Love, man. What a performance. Um, and he got a lot of different guys involved in this one. Um, which was key because some of their receivers, namely Christian Watson, had had really on and off starts to the season. Um, but Christian Watson, first play of the game, hit that big boy post to him. Um, he was he was downloaded and ready to go from the start. Um, but Malik Heath, uh, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, like a lot of guys getting involved in the passing game. Um, Tucker Craft, too, um, who I didn't know was Robert Kraft's grandson, I think, unless they were capping on the broadcast. I'm about to say, where they, is he really? <laughs> they said it on the broadcast, so unless they was lying, um, now I got to Google it. Let me not <laughs> let me not lie to America real quick. Hold on. <laughs> Tucker Kraft, Robert Kraft. Um, maybe, maybe they lied to me. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Dang, I feel like no, nah, I feel like I wouldn't have to look this hard if it was true. So act like Back. I didn't say that. <laughs> either way, either way. Um, like I said, Jordan Love was getting it, throwing it around to everybody, getting a lot of different receivers involved. Um, and ball security, like I said, three touchdowns, zero picks, big win, division rival on Thanksgiving. No better feeling. Um, so shout out to Jordan Love. Yeah, man, he was a he was a, one of my guys. Um, I, I wrote down a bunch of different people, but he was definitely one of the guys that you know what I'm saying he definitely needed to get some love. So it's because mm -hmm. a lot of people was an, another person, but bro, people were trying to be out on him. Like, bro, this is his first year starting. I get right. it. This is like his fourth year. This is his first year starting, bro. I don't practice reps don't mean nothing compared to actual no. reps in the game, bro. It means absolutely nothing, bro. That scout D line doesn't hit you. No, <laughs> they don't. It's not the same, bro. Yeah. Come on. So, but yeah, all right. So my guy, I got, I got to bring this guy up, bro. I love this guy to death, bro. Is Kyron Williams? Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, he's on he's on every fantasy team I have, every single one. Really? Like, wow. Every single one. That's that's why he's so near and dear to my heart, bro. But just as far as like a real life stat line, bro. First game back after four weeks, I was out with an ankle injury. Rushed 16 times, 143 yards, which is good in its own right. Then you add in six catches, 61 yards, two receiving touchdowns. That is 8.9 yards a carry. That is 204 yards per scrimmage. In his first game back after missing four games, that is elite, bro. And, and when you watch the runs, looked amazing, looked explosive. Looked fast, like the vision was there, the cuss was there. Mm -hmm. The he was always a good pass catcher, but um, but yeah, and he's getting he's getting plays drawn up for him. He's getting screens drawn up for him. The touchdown he had, I believe, out of the backfield, um, looked like it was that was where it was supposed to go. So he's getting featured, and he looks great, bro. Like started the season, I, I'm glad to see, and like this is from real right real life perspective, not fantasy. I'm glad to see that it wasn't like just like a fluky like you get all the touches so you're gonna do good type of thing like no he's a, he's legitimately a, a really good running back he deserves his uh his shot you know to be featured a little bit so shout out to Kyron Williams man absolutely <laughs> dismantled the Cardinals and mm -hmm. I believe for the second time because the first game I think he had like bro had like 10 yards in the first half and then they was like all right let's give him the ball and had like 150 yards rushing in the second half alone so absolutely destroyed the Cardinals yeah he he went crazy he actually single-handedly probably lost me um, a game <laughs> in fantasy because I was going against him. So 
him dropping 40 in somebody's flex <laughs> spot. It's a, it's a little tough to deal with. Right, um, right, but bro. yeah, Kyron had Kyron had himself a day. Who needs Cooper Cup? Who needs Puka? You got Kyron. You got Kyron, bro. You don't need you don't need neither of them guys. Uh next guy I have here, actually gonna stick to the same Packers Lions game because I I wanted I wanted to spread it out a little bit more, but I I couldn't not shout this shout this guy out because he jumped off the film on the broadcast. The stats speak for themselves. Rashawn Gary, three sacks, seven total tackles, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery. Absolutely feasted on what is one of the best offensive lines in football in Detroit, and basically. Bro, made that start of the game for Jared Goff. Absolute hell. I was finishing up cooking and while I was watching this game, and it felt like every time I turned around to stir a pot or flip something, it was like, Jared Goff, fumble. Jared Goff, sack, fumble. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, bro, what is going on over here? Like, yeah, it isn't the rest. <laughs> yeah, that, that Packers defense was getting after it, and Rashawn Gary was the spearhead of that. So, had to make sure I shout him out. Like I said, Two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery, three sacks, bro. Like, that is a monster, monster day. I think he had the most uh, sacks out of any player this past week. So I had to make sure I shout him out. Yeah, 100%. Well, like I said, Jared, Jared Goff's life was a living hell that whole game. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Another one of my top performers, I'll stick to the offense. I'll save my defensive guy for a little bit later. But I got to give my man B. John Robinson a shout out. Um, Defeated Arthur Smith, finally. <laughs> he was able to actually get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, rush for 16 attempts. Clearly, 16 attempts is just what you need to be great. Um, 16 attempts, 91 rushing yards, 5.7 a carry, had a rushing touchdown, then added in three catches, 32 yards, and a nice uh, receiving touchdown as well. And the main reason why I added this in here because it was against the Saints, who normally have a really good defense. Um, so the competition matters a little bit, you know what I mean? So I added that in there because, one, he's a rookie. These past couple times, past couple games, he's starting to get, you know, majority of the touches. And you can see it like when he gets the ball, like good stuff happens. So hopefully that can continue to keep going because Arthur Smith loves to just give the ball to Cordell Patterson for some reason. But, you know, if he can get the ball, special stuff happens. So shout out to him. My next guy, and I have a couple in here that I'm like, they weren't like the top, top guys, but I, I can't not bring them up. Um, and you'll appreciate this one. Um, I could have put multiple names for, for this, um, but let's let's go with quarterback coach Mike Sullivan, who was calling the plays. Yeah. In this week. <laughs> yeah. And the Steelers had their first 400 yard game. We back. Bro, it's it's been over 50 games since y'all <laughs> did that. That is me, insanity. Oh. Man, we back, baby. Triple B's at triple B's. We back, baby. <laughs> High powered offense. Let's go. Uh, but but yeah, I also had down here Pat Fryermuth had himself a big day. Nine catches, 120 yards. Um, in a big win division game. Still didn't put up a ton, ton of points, but hey, 400 yards is 400 yards, however you want to slice it up. Um, so shout out to the whole Steelers offense, really. <laughs> that could be mm-hmm. the top performer. Getting rid of Matt Canada, putting up 400 yards a week after um, is definitely big for that locker room. Um, and then just generally how they're sitting in the AFC playoff picture. So shout out to them. 100%. Now, my guy I want to have here, oh, let me let me pull the stats up because I don't want to discredit my guy. You know what I mean? And, and since you did me a solid, you shouted out my team. I'll yeah. shout out your team. I'll do you a solid. I mean, Dak Prescott was hooping. Slaying I mean, it. My man, Dak Prescott, MVP candidate, Dak Prescott. Might mm-hmm. have had him there. My man's 22 completions, 331 yards, four TDs. Absolutely dying up the, the commanders. And the thing was, because I heard a lot of people talk about, you know, reasons why he's not in the MVP conversation. Yeah, they, they don't really win because of him. Kind of like a Purdy thing. Kind of like a, I'd say Tua kind of a little bit. How, like, people say, like, oh, yeah, they're winning because of the defense and this. And, like, he's just game managing. He's slinging the ball, bro. Like, I don't know what games I've been watching. Yeah, the game, the defense has been playing well. Yes, I mean, they are these are teams with losing records. But at the end of the day, bro, it's a good they sign. They make the you, schedule. It's a good sign when you beat the teams that you're supposed to beat. 
in ways you're supposed to beat them. Like when you right. actually, you're not struggling against these bad teams. You're actually blowing them out. And as of right now, bro, he's dying, bro. What you want him to do? Because if he was out here game managing, yeah, I'd be like, bro, he stinks. He's only game managing. Now he's out here dying, bro. He, you can only you. do it against the bad team. What you want him to do? It's a lose lose regardless, bro. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. Shout out to Dak. And then what I did have to add in here, one more guy. I don't even have no stats pulled up. I just this was just off the straight eye test. Uh Traverius Ward, the corner for the 49ers. He mm-hmm. had DK in prison. <laughs> like watching that game, he had him in in a box, bro. Mm-hmm. I, I had to because I had to add in the defensive guy, and I was just thinking about it. I'm just watching the game um on Thanksgiving. And I'm like, bro, where's DK at? Like, where's DK? At? Then I seen like a cl- I seen because I, I, I he was playing well. I seen him on a lot of pass breakups. Then I just seen every play that they were lined up against each other to where like they were going at it, bro. He was it was textbook, bro. Had him in prison to the point where, bro, DK was. Kind of in his own head, dropped the easy little hitch route. He he played a fantastic game, so shout out to him. Cause I had I had to get a defensive guy in there. Yeah, he had three PBUs in that game. He definitely was clamping up. Yeah, he he strapped. Um, I got two more little like honorable mention guys before I get into my last guy. Um, got a shout out, uh, Jesse Bates, twelve Ooh, total yeah. tackles, which led the team. He had one pass breakup and then had the pick six. 92 yard pick six had to go the whole length of the field basically Mm -hmm. Um, put up a touchdown in that Falcons game that you were talking about which was a big reason why they were able to win that game and again was a big reason why they held the Saints without a touchdown in this entire game Um, and had Derek Carr in the I don't think it was a post game I think he had media availability today and they asked him about that play and he said you know, the guy just made a great play. You know, he's supposed to be in the middle of the field on cover three, and he wasn't there. Bro. Seems like he's just looking at your eyes. I don't know. I was what about to say. You, yeah, he's <laughs> watching you stare down this little post route right here, bro. What are you talking? It was a – bro, it was such a terrible read. Like, you weren't even thinking. The guy wasn't even open if Jesse Bates wasn't there. No, he was not. <laughs> he wasn't even open regardless. So, like, I don't know what – I don't know what he was looking at. Yeah, still, still a great play by Jesse to go up and grab that one and crib it on the way back. Um, like I said, 12 total tackles, led the team. He's all over the field. He is the best and one of the only bright spots on that Atlanta Falcons defense. Um, so shout out to him. And I also have to shout out Josh Allen in a losing effort, um, put up yeah. four total touchdowns. It was sloppy game, like literally, like it was pouring rain. Mm-hmm. Um, but – I mean, did everything that he could do, um, you know, three, 29 of 51 passing, 339 yards, um, two touchdowns, one pick, um, and then ran for 81 yards and two touchdowns as well. Had some big, big boy runs in the red zone for that Bills team. Kept them in it all the way till the very end. Just He just can't ever get it done in overtime, <laughs> which is, is tough. Bro's like 0-6 at OT. Bro had the rules changed for him and still can't win an overtime game. Like, what are we doing here? Hey, you, he had the rule change. All you got to do is get touchdown. Didn't get I mean, the touchdown. Gabe Davis it wasn't locked, bro. He didn't know that. That's miscommunication, bro. That's bad, bro. That's a, I literally jumped out of my seat like touchdown and then seeing that the ball was going the other way. And I was like, no, bro. Y'all going to let the Eagles squeak out with another one. Bro. <laughs> uh, do you have one more guy? I do, but I don't. Want, well, I don't. I have one guy that we didn't mention, but I want you to say your guy first. I don't want to right. steal your guy. I'm keeping it the same game. My last top performer uh, is Jalen Hurts. That's it, what it, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> it, 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 we, it couldn't go unmentioned. Facts. Um it's not a huge day passing, uh, especially not early on. Um, but he had that stretch where I think he had three passing touchdowns and four throws or something like that. Yeah, finished the day 18 for 31, 200 yards, uh passing, three touchdowns, one pick. Um, and then ran for 65 yards, two rushing touchdowns, including the last one, which was like a 15 yard. Uh, no, it wasn't really even like a QB draw. It was just a scramble. He got in. Um, or it was a QB draw. I'm tripping. It was. Um, it was yeah, but it was more like a design draw. Yeah, but but took it in from about 15 yards out. Got the job done. Won the game in overtime. Um, in a big big overtime win for Philly. 
keeps everything in front of them. They are in control of their own destiny as much as it pains me to say it Mm -hmm. for not just the NFC East, but also the one seat in the NFC, the top record in the NFL. Um, Jalen Hurts, he's a playmaker, bro. Like, they don't matter how you want to slice it, dice it. Uh, People want to talk about the refs. People want to talk about his team, this or that, the whole line, the weapons, bro. I don't care. We've seen it since college. If you need a play to be made, Jalen Hurts is a playmaker. You Mm -hmm. cannot cut it any other way. So he has to be shouted out as a top performer in Week 12, um, getting the game-winning touchdown there in Philly. And it doesn't matter how bad he's played in the first half. It doesn't matter if like how the team is playing, bro. When that fourth quarter come, when OT come, you need to throw, you need to run. Like like I said, the playmaker, bro, he just turns just turns it on, bro. It's like he's always like he's never rattled, bro. Like it's insane. Always pulls out these wins. So shout out to him for sure. Yep. And they've got a couple of tough games left. Still got to go. Um, they do play the 49ers at home and they got to go to Dallas. Uh, but they wrap up the season. Seattle, Giants, Cardinals, Giants. So if Jesus San Christ. Fran or Dallas can't get it off them, bro, this is a 16 and one team. This is a 16 and one team to win those games. Hey, like, man, I say one thing. Only QB to beat them all year was Zach Wilson. I just, I'm just throwing that out there. That's the only QB to beat them. He might be better than we thought. Who knows? Hey, he might be the chosen oh, one. If you need any more reasoning that any given Sunday is a real thing. That's the stat <laughs> right there <laughs> of all the quarterbacks that Jalen Hurts has played this year. The one he's lost to is the one that lost his job to Tim Boyle. Crazy. Insanity. That's going to do it for our top performers though. And with that, let me get the music queued up. So we're going to get into our week 12 rapid recap. Love um, it. We get the banners pulled up. Y'all know that y'all got to bear with us. The mic is going to cut out. We're going to come right back. Still not back. Now we're we're back. back. Now we're we're back. back. (laughs) It's it's really like five seconds perfectly every single time. That's crazy. Um. We're going to roll through week 12. So this is our rapid recap of week 12 of the NFL season, starting out with the Thanksgiving games. Like we mentioned, Packers 29, Lions 22. Big, big win for the Packers in division in the NFC North. Yeah, we talked about it with the top performers. Jordan Love played great. Um, the Lions was under a lot of, like, he, like Derek Goff was under duress a lot, which was kind of nuts. And, um, yeah, this is, a, this is a huge win for the Packers because, like you said, I didn't expect the Packers to win this game. I thought the Lions were going to win pretty I easily. Was, right. I thought this would be a steamroll. Yeah, exactly. So, big win for the Packers. Hopefully the Lions aren't having those expectations kind of get to them a little bit because they're not really used to being in this position. So, hopefully that's, you know, not getting to them. They better finish the job because that would be so disappointing. Facts. Next one we got here, Cowboys 45, Commanders 10. That's how we do it. That's how you beat up on a bad team. Uh, Deron Bland, NFL record oh. five picks. How did he not get in the how top How did he not be the top performers? We, yo, we bugged out. Hold on. We, that's crazy. That's crazy how we forgot about uh, that, bro. Honorary top performer now, Deron Bland, had another pick six. As soon as I saw him catch it, I jumped up off the couch because I Me knew too. he was taking a crib. <laughs> I don't care who was in front of him. He was taking that one yeah. to the um, And look, did it in 11 games. So you can't say, well, they got the 17-game season, whatever this and that. Nah, he did it in 11. NFL mm-hmm. record, five pick sixes in one season. The Cowboys are rolling into the stretch of their schedule where they're going to have to play the Niners, the Eagles, and Miami. So hopefully they can get that win over a good team with a winning record. And we can cut out all of these narratives about they only beat up on bad teams. They need to prove it in these next couple of weeks. 100%, man. I did the same thing. So I seen them catch a big, I was like, that's the record. That's the, I was, I was, you would have thought I was a Cowboys fan. Right. I, was, I was up. I was hype, but yeah. I'm not going to uh, lie. I took my shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but listen, man. It was, like I said, good win. 
beat up on the on the um on the bad teams, but do it in a way that you know you can get out of this game. Or I mean, I don't think they pulled their guys that early. I think it was still kind of into the fourth quarter, but mm -hmm. still beat them handily. That's what you're supposed to do to the bad team. So like I said, hopefully they can get a a marquee win coming up pretty soon. Definitely. Nightcap primetime game on Thanksgiving, 49ers 31, Seahawks 13. The Seahawks offense, bro, they look, it's real up and down with them. Real up yeah. and down. I know they're playing the 49ers, so take that with a grain of salt. But either way, it's real roller coastery in Seattle right now. I'm not very comfortable with that team. Yeah, no, their offense just doesn't look good, bro. And I agree, like, even though they play the 49ers, even in other games this season, like, I don't think there's been one time where I looked at the Seahawks offense. Maybe the Lions game. That was in, like, what, week two or three or something. Mm -hmm. That was the only time all season where I looked at their offense and was like, okay, that looks like the offense of last year. So they're struggling a little bit. Um, but as far as the 49ers, they're rolling. I mean, they look right back to before they get win on that little three-game skid. So curious to see how the season ends up for, for both these teams. Got the Eagles this week. That's a big one. Oh that is a God. big one. There's a lot of talk. They say y'all would have won if y'all had a QB. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this solves that, but I mean, it's a nice little, you know, if y'all end up beating the Eagles, especially if y'all like beat them like like good, not like bowed them out, but you have a good win against them, mm -hmm. you can pretty much say whatever you want at that point. Hey, Hassan Reddick was, he's feeling the same thing. And he was like, there's a lot of the same thing. All that talk about y'all would have, would have, should have, could have, could have won, whatever. He said, line that shit up. Mm. We're gonna see it. Is we this Sunday night? It. What is this? No, it's the afternoon slot. It needs to be prime time, bro. This Lex this game, NFL. This got Sunday night written all over it. What are we Sunday doing? Sunday night, Monday night. I need to be something night, not Thursday. Bro. Night, but no, Sunday no, no, not or Thursday. Monday. <laughs> not Thursday. I don't know why, but just not Thursday. But we go yeah. Monday, Sunday. Oh my god, this will be perfect. Perfect with end of night. Um, first Black Friday game uh at Afternoon on a Friday, Dolphins out here beating up on wounded prey in the <laughs> AFC East. Dolphins 34, Jets 13. Robert Sala came out after this game and said he is still sticking it out with Tim Boyle in New York. Um, and I, let me pull up his stats from this game because I know they were not fantastic. Um, 27 to 38, 179 yards, one touchdown, two picks. He had a four. 0.6 QBR in this one. Wow. Um, Dolphins wise, you guys are also some bullies. You beat up on bad teams. You need a good win. So to the side. Reek is the best. But to that, that to the side. <laughs> the Jets, bro, I'm going to be honest. Their whole season is on Aaron Rodgers, bro. It's, it's Aaron Rodgers. He can come back to practice this week. I don't care. The whole season is on Aaron Rodgers, bro. Because you, Tim Boyle is apparently his buddy. They're best, apparently their friends. So that's the only reason why he's on the team. Because he shouldn't even be on an NFL roster. Like, I've never seen somebody with a worse college resume than him. Get hey, multiple he, chances on multiple teams. Bro, he's and CT starts. product, bro. He's CT product. I, he stinks. He <laughs> stinks. I don't – bro, he is bad, bro. He has more interceptions and touchdowns in college. And you got drafted, and you have multiple chances on multiple teams. He started for the Packers before, the Lions. Not like yeah. coming to the season, but like he's gotten chances to start. And the rest, those are reps. Like that bro, that's nuts. To me. That's insane. Look, he's at fault. Randall Cobb's is. We joke about senior citizens. He's legit a senior citizen. <laughs> and Alan Lazard is a healthy scratch, bro. That is nuts. That's a insane. Healthy scratch on a team with Randall Cobb as your number two. It's all Aaron Rodgers, bro. Because like these are your friends. You brought in all your friends, and your friends suck. You're a good friend, though. I tell you one thing. He rides his boys. He's a good friend. He do. I respect yeah. it. I respect it. Hey. Oh, yeah. They say he might come back week sixteen. Bro, then he's not coming back, bro. They're gonna it's be no way. He's gonna. They're gonna be out of the playoffs. He's not gonna risk his Achilles falling off the bone. <laughs> like he's not gonna risk that. Bro. That's a tender, bro. It's no <laughs> way, bro. Yeah, see, he's not coming back, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah. I had hope. Though. I hope they was in like decent. That's why I wanted to get like a Josh. You imagine it just with Josh Dobbs? Oh my gosh, bro. Garrett Wilson's was stock would be through the roof. Oh my god, bro. So, but they're not gonna be in playoff contention. There's no point in him even risking that, bro. Just heal up for next season, bro. Tough, 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 tough. Talked about it a little bit earlier, but Falcons 24, Saints 15 in a game that, a first of all, in a division that needs to be restructured. Y'all yeah. been too mid for like two or three seasons in a row. Some gotta give, bro. 
every year it feels like this is the division shit. Somebody got to win it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bro. Um, and it's the exact same thing this year. People have been calling for Arthur Smith's job, and he might win the division. I'm sick of it, bro. Bro, they're five and six, and they're leading the division. It's disgusting, and it's annoying because, like you said, it gives Arthur Smith, like, he can say, like, bro, what I'm doing is working. We winning. We leading the division. Bro, do you want to be mid your whole life, bro? You don't got to reach for the stars, bro. Right. Like, what's up with this? Like, I don't know, but Saints, the, all the receivers, like, literally died. So, like, they couldn't have any offense. And the Falcons, they finally get Bijan on the ball. Hooray. Other than that, bro. Like you said, it's just mid. Like, it's funny because y'all not even, like, like Panthers bad, but, like, y'all not good at all. So, like, y'all are the definition of mid. Yeah, Saints fans I know are going through it. I've seen Saints fans for weeks calling for Carr's job, and I've Dennis seen Allen's a lot more. Too. He's I've seen them calling bro. for his job too, bro. You cannot go in a game and you, bro, five field goals. That fifteen you see, that is five times three, five field goals, Nuts. zero touchdowns. Dennis Allen should have been fired. He's this is abolish this is the whole game. Just abolish everyone on on both teams. Yeah, it's it's nasty, nasty to watch. We talking about bad football. His game wasn't that bad, but this division is that bad. Right. Steelers 16, Bengals 10. We talked about it earlier. The Steelers go over four. Hundo for the first time in like four years, which is crazy. Bro. Um, still only muster 16 points, but hey, they get the job done. Kenny Pickett had himself a little day. Firemuth had a day. Najee didn't look too bad. This offense, it's got life. It's got life. That's all you could ask for after the Matt Canada regime. Put it this way. We looked watchable. That, like, the offense looked watchable. And coming from as bad as we are, um, from a team as bad as we were as far as offensively, that's enough for me to, like, not blow my head off, bro. We were watchable. We threw the ball down the field. It's not 100 screen plays every play. Like, we looked good. I know Matt Canada was literally crying, sliding down the wall watching this game. It's like, in the moment you get fired, <laughs> right, why me? In the moment you get fired, and they have their best offensive game in four seasons, bro, what? Bro, I'd be, bro, I don't care how good of a guy you are, bro. I'd be pissed, bro. I'd be yeah. so mad. Like, oh, my God. But, yeah, we got to work on, you know, actually getting in the end zone. That's the next step. But, hey, 400 yards of offense. It's a good start for me, man. I'm going to pause the music because I need to ask you a serious question. Oh, man. We don't ever pause the music. I'm worried. I'm scared. (laughs) What's going on with Deontay Johnson, bro? (sighs) Bro, like, Deontay has to be the most frustrating player to be a fan of, bro, because, like, he has moments where I'm like, bro, this guy's one of the best route runners in the league. Like, he's a legit receiver. Then he just, like, bro, the guy run ran backwards on the play. He literally ran backwards on a play, and then on another play, legit watched the fumble happen and was like, "Damn, I should probably, t- I probably could have got that." That's tough though. Like, bro, like, and, and I and that was after he dropped the uh, game, not game winning touchdown. He dropped an open touchdown. That yeah. it was a little tough, but he should have caught it. Like. Between the drops, the bonehead play sometimes, like, Deontay pisses me off. I love him, but he pisses me off, bro. Jesus Christ, bro. The fumble, I was screaming. Yeah, I was, because I knew it was a fumble. I was pissed that you didn't even attempt. Bro. You just looked at it and was like, damn, that's crazy. Like, controller died. Wi-Fi shut off. Unplug the system like bro was on autopilot. <laughs> I've ne- I have not seen something like that on NFL field, bro. And the funnier part is in the post-game interview, they asked him about it. He was like, you know, I was, like, blocking on the play. Like, <laughs> and then, bro, it's, it's all such a bad look because it's like, bro, that's blocking? That he wasn't blocking. blocking. He wasn't blocking he, nobody. He was, you smooth, like, off the snap, took, like, three steps forward and stood still. Ball comes out. All right, whatever. You feel me? You look the other way. You ain't see the fumble. Whatever. The dude you supposed to be blocking is the one who grabs the fumble, scoops it, and it ran past you, and you just. Damn. Thought it was incomplete. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like, bro, what, bro? Like, dude literally staring at them or run past and he's just like, damn, somebody should have really did something about that. That's, right? tough. <laughs> That's tough. Yo, handle that. Like, bro, right. what's you not you not playing? You want to see? He did what every fan did, every fan watching. He just that was crazy. I, I had to pause the music just for that because it. I just could not believe that that was his for real answer. I would have rather he would have just been like, I'm not going to lie, bro. The last play was in my head. Like, I just checked out. Like, bro, I would have respected that better. Right. We don't got to lie. I was blocking. He wasn't even blocking, bro. He just, he if he was blocking at worst, that dude wouldn't have got the fumble. He could have said, like, I thought it was incomplete. Like, it was a run, was it? Oh, not? oh yeah, it was a run. It was a run. I forgot. Or I, I thought he was, was. I meant to say, I thought he was down. Like, you could have uh, said anything. Like, I thought he was down. I don't know, bro. That was that was bad. That just pissed me off. Oh my god. I don't know if it's gonna cut the mic back out, but is the mic cut out? Are we good? Nah, I, think, I think we good. Okay, good. We bringing the music back in, but we, we had to had to get through that partially because I'm gonna cut it into a short, and I ain't need the music in the background. But <laughs> Deontay is crazy for that. Titans 17, Panthers 10. Um, Frank Wright just got fired today, so Carolina is now out. Of their their head coach after ten games, which are ten or nine games, or like eleven, I think. Yeah, it, it's like the the shortest leash a leash a coach has had since like the seventies in terms of his tenure from being like the official head coach to fired, which is crazy because it's not Frank Reich's fault. Aside from the fact that he did say he started taking over play calling, and on fourth and six with the game on the line, he threw a screen five yards behind the ball. I'm not, I'm not going to act like that didn't happen, but that is not the sole reason why this team is in the place this is. We talked about it earlier. O-line is the worst in the NFL. Uh, just disgusting to watch every single week. Mm-hmm. The receiving room, also the worst in the NFL. If you go, anybody that's watching this and is curious about is Bryce Young really that bad, go watch Adam Thielen run a route in a Carolina uniform. And, and t- come, come, come back and tell me. And that's their star. Like that's their, that's their guy. That's their that's their number one. That's their ex. Bro, Adam Thielen, I could have told you he was washed last year on the Vikings as a number two. And you He's decided just old and slow. Yeah, that's all that's it. That's it. And there's no like he had a great career. Like really good for him. I, I'm right. happy he even got a bag. Good for him. But come on, bro. He was actually putting up numbers beginning of the season. Which he is was. crazy. He, he PPR, he's like wide receiver 10 still. Yeah, which he is nuts. Hoping. You gotta throw to somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, hey, you know, I'm excited. If they get a real receiver, whoever that is, <laughs> I'm gonna hey. draft him. I'll Imagine draft if him. they got DJ Moore. Bro, a DJ Moore would fit perfectly on this team. They should trade for him or something. Yeah, I, I know, know it's crazy. But wish they had a they, first round pick. Yeah. Man. Marvin they Harrison. About to, they about to give up Caleb Williams to another team, bro. That's nuts. Like they could have DJ Moore and Caleb next year because they was gonna suck regardless. Without they might as well have not drafted a QB. Don't get me wrong, it's not Bryce Young's fault. I'm not no. saying it's like oh, his fault. But they it's like, just overpaid. They did overpay. They overpaid a lot. Especially it's even worse that CJ Stroud was absolutely hooping. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but still, uh, I think Frank Wright is getting like he's not he's not a bad that bad. Scapegoated. The craziest part about all this, like we just we just talking about, they overpaid. I, it's gonna come out clearly, but if you go through some of his press com, he's weaved the narrative. It's it's there. He did not want Bryce Young. He didn't. He wanted C.J. Stroud, but the owner wanted Bryce Young, so like so he forced his hand. You, you forced him to get the guy he didn't want, and when it didn't work in ten games with a roster where I don't think it would have worked anyway. Put C.J. Str- C.J. Stroud on this team. It looks the same. Facts. No quarterback can survive getting hit. And the pressure that Bryce Young faces week in, week out with that receiving core. He has no help anywhere with that right. running game. That's why they fired their running back coach, too. I don't think it's his fault either. But it's like, it's just a horrible situation. And you really fired the head coach because of it. When Bro. he didn't even want to be in this situation to begin with. The, the Panthers are one of the worst run organizations, like, in the league. As far as just decisions and the, the moves that they make, like, it's like they just do stuff so ass backwards. It's crazy. Even like how they handled the Brian Burns thing. They had like what they had like two firsts on the deal on the table. It was like nah. Then it was like ah, we could trade them now. Like I don't know. They they suck, bro. They just suck. So I, I feel bad for Bryce Young. I just hope 
that eventually they could give them some sort of protection and some sort of weapons so they right. can at least escape the bus narratives because right. it's not a bus at least not yet you cannot call them a bus and i hope they do it soon for his confidence is really shot because yeah. this is not helpful for any co- any young player especially not a young quarterback they they need to start putting more um blame on teams for players being bust because if he turns out to be a bus it's like bro he have never had a chance he literally never had a fair shot uh, fair right. shot, so. unfortunate um next game we got Colts 27 bucks 10 or 20 got a shout out Shane Steichen in Indianapolis above 500 11 weeks into the season with no AR they are in the AFC wild card if the season ended today they're playing solid football over there. We know what Jonathan Taylor's been doing since he's been back. Garner Minshew's been slinging it. Pittman's having himself some good games. This offense looks look good, bro. They, hey, their schedule ain't in a terrible spot. They could hold out. Yeah, no, they, they look they looking solid. The offense looks good. I, like when I see these Colts games, bro, I'm just like so sad. Like we didn't get Anthony Richardson this year. Like that would have been so fun to watch, but so it does fun. make me. Does make me excited for next season for them. So, but I mean, good for them. I, I don't know why. To me, like when I when the Bucks are on TV, it's not even like they're a bad team or anything. I just zone out. I don't know why. Like I just like yeah, they're like they're not they're not even bad and they're not even like not fun to watch. I just been like they're just so like whatever. <laughs> like I don't know. It's just so whatever. Speaking of whatever, Giants ten, Patriots seven. I, we could speed Amen. through this, bro. Tommy, Tommy DeVito, Tommy DeVito, he was big. Tommy, you know what it is, likes himself a good cold cut. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, listen, that's the funny, that's the only storyline I bought this whole game, the whole giant season. That's the only part I like. I tuned in for. Other than that, bro, both teams, Caleb, (laughs) like that's it. Oh, well, Giants now, I mean, they winning a little bit, they winning some games they shouldn't win if they really want to get a new QB. Tommy DeVito got the same amount of wins as Mac Jones this year. Bro, man, uh, oh. bro, I, I will say, bro, he's bad, bro. Like, he's like the arm strength is terrible. He has a pea shooter. The decision making is bad. And now his confidence is absolutely done for. Like, bro, look like genuinely, and this is not even to make fun of him. Like, he just looks like he's about to cry. Like, when he's on the sidelines or at the podium, like, I kind of feel bad for him. Yeah, but I do. He, he's done, bro. He's it's not a bad situation. He's not a starting quarterback, especially not for the Patriots, bro. He's done. Bad, bad situation. From a bad situation to a good one, though, Jaguars 24, Texans 21. If this is any indicator of what we have in store for the future of the AFC South, this is what I am happy to see. Mm -hmm. T-Law and C.J. Stroud were battling it out in this one. Um, I think he even had a quote after somebody asked him about what it's like to potentially be playing against C.J. Stroud for Mm -hmm. a long time. And he said he ain't like it because he wishes all the QBs in his conference was was bad. So a little bit of a backhanded compliment. But, hey, I I would feel the same way if I was him. But Jaguars, sitting at 8-3, and it wasn't always pretty, but they've been getting the job done. Got a couple of tough games to to wrap up the season. But them and Dougie P going to, looks like, wrap up this conference, barring a little bit of an implosion here on the back end. Um, let's get back into the playoffs and make some real noise in the AFC. Yeah, hundred percent. So this is a good game. Like I love watching Texans games now, bro. It's mm-hmm. like it seems like they're always high scoring, always like really good offense. CJ Stroud, but we know right now is just playing great. So back and forth, really good game. I ain't really got much else, much else to really say right now. Mm-hmm. Heater alert! Five game streak. Man. The Denver Broncos. Over the Browns, 29-12. to 12. Like I said, they've rattled off five in a row. Russell Wilson's oh, man, getting in his bag. He's using his legs a little bit. Is this Seattle? We ain't right. seen this Russ in a little bit of a while. Um, the Broncos, they're looking to make a playoff push. To go from a team that was 1-5 and five to 6-5, and five, I'm impressed, man. I am impressed. Bro, Russ is playing good, bro. Like, he's, I don't know what to, what more to say, bro. Russ, apparently Russ wasn't washed. You know what I mean? Maybe it really was hacky because, you know, he's he's playing good. The offense is scoring some points. The defense is turning around since that 70-point debacle that they gave up. After that, they've been, you know, they've been solid. So, mm-hmm. look yeah, out, bro. This defense has been clamping. Yeah. Which was like always, I never got why they were so bad to start because I'm not. Like, I don't either. The pieces was still the same. I don't get what was going on. And they got rid of some people, I believe. 
And now they're playing better. So maybe they weaved out the bad apples. Who knows? But they, they've been playing good, bro. They, they're on a hot streak right now. Yeah, I talked about this one earlier, but Rams 37, Cardinals 14. We talked about it. Kyron Williams absolutely exploded in this one. Um, Rams are also sitting in an interesting spot where they are still in the hunt for a uh, AFC uh, or sorry, NFC wild card spot. They're sitting at five and six. Um, they do have a couple of tough games left. Do have to go to the 49ers, still have to play the Browns and the Ravens. Um, so it'll be tough for them to, to get it done. But hey, for fantasy purposes, Kyron, Cooper, Puka, they got some hitters. They got hitters. Facts, man. And that was, that was at some point in the game, <clears throat> I seen a stat that popped up on the TV. It was like Kyron Williams total scrimmage yards 181. It was like the Cardinals offense was like 170. Crazy. So he destroyed them. And as a Kyron fantasy manager, oh, that was the, bro, the best thing to see ever. So, yeah, shout out to the Rams, though. Still fighting, still staying alive. Um, And they, they all, look, the offense, they got a lot of pieces just off of real life talent. Like, Cooper Cup was kind of a decoy this game. They didn't really need to throw the ball much anyways. They got whatever they wanted on the ground. So I believe Royce Freeman had like 70 yards rushing and a touchdown too. So everyone's got whatever they want. But as far as offensive talent, definitely solid. Definitely. Chiefs 31, Raiders 17. Felt like a bit of a slow start for the Chiefs in this one. Um, but they were able to pick it up. Rasheed Rice, I think, went over the century mark in receiving yards. I think he had a touchdown, mm-hmm. too, on the day. Yeah. Um, and despite Josh Jacobs kind of exploding there for a little bit, the Chiefs were able to hold off the Raiders um, and, and get a bounce-back win for them. Yeah, they needed it for sure. They needed to have, a, you know, like a solid game. They needed to score in the second half. Yes. You know, because that was nuts. Not scoring, like, what, three straight games in the second half is crazy. So, they, they yeah, they needed that for sure. So hopefully that gets him like on track offensively a little bit because did all this while missing some pieces too. I believe like Cole Harmon was hurt. I think mm-hmm. McKinnon was hurt. It was they had some missing pieces, so they definitely needed this one bad. Definitely needed it. And speaking of needed it, when the Eagles needed him most, Jalen Hurts, like we talked about, got the game winning rushing touchdown in overtime. Eagles thirty seven, Bills thirty four. We talked about it, Josh Allen, 0-6 in overtime games. The Bills fall to 6-6, six and six, I believe, on the season yep. now. With some tough games left at Kansas City, home against Dallas, um, and they wrap up the season in Miami. I don't know, Look, man. There's a real world. This is not a playoff team, and that is tough. They're not. They're cooked. This is over. It's already over to me. They're not beating... Cause they they got pretty much go what undefeated to have a chance. I don't think ten and seven. I don't think that's gonna get you in, bro. Like they have, yeah, one, two, three, four, five games left. So they'd be eleven and six. I don't think ten and seven is gonna get you in in this AFC, bro. I'm gonna be honest. Like ten and, and you know I don't think they got any tiebreakers with anybody. Like I don't even have the standings pulled up, but like I don't know if they got the tiebreaker with a lot of teams they kind of fighting for. So I mean. We're, listen, they're going to have to win a lot of these games. Put it that way. If they win, what, two more or lose like two more, I think they're cooked. So, yeah, yeah it is, it's not looking good for them. It's really not looking good for them because they haven't looked good. I know they put up 34 points, but, like, the Eagles' secondary is, like, Swiss cheese. So, like, every quarterback is kind of hooping against them. Yeah. But to me, that doesn't really – it doesn't really hold as much weight as normal. Last game, Sunday Night Football. Uh I don't think we can use the, the the offense and Justin Herbert excuse in this one. Chargers only muster up 10 points um, and lose to the Ravens 20 to 10. This Chargers team now sits at four and seven. They're on a three game skid. Uh, it's I don't even know what to say about this team anymore, man. It's just it's tough. It's tough. And like I said, you can't even pin this one on the defense. No. Nah. It you was, gotta put up more than ten points, man. You gotta put up more than ten. I understand the Ravens defense is good, but yeah, you just got to. I mean, the only thing I can say is that they had basically nothing rushing the ball. Like Eckler looks a little, you know, like that age is creeping up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean the only receiver he has that's reliable is Keenan. Like, bro had like 15, 16 targets and caught like fourteen of them. But he did. <laughs> But it's just it's tough, man. I don't even like I said. I don't even know what to really say to fix it. Like maybe Brent, Brent, what's the name? Brandon Staley has to go. I'll just put it that way. That's the only <laughs> when in doubt, fire. It's him. been that way. It's been that way. 
Exactly. So it's been tough for them, though. Shout out Zay Flowers, though, had a, a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown in this one. Mm -hmm. um, big night for him. Um, yeah, this Chargers team, man, suspect, suspect, suspect. As always, after the rapid recap, got to ask about Monday night football. Not a huge, huge matchup. Got Chicago in Minnesota. Any predictions for this one? Uh no, <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> it's in it. Where is it? What's uh? Who's home? Uh, Vikings in Minnesota. In Minnesota, Josh Dobbs. I'm rooting for the Vikings. I hope they pull it off. The Vikings are. Fun. I'm I'm rooting for the Bears. I know. Listen, I do. I have a fantasy team where I got Fields and DJ Moore, and I need them to go nuclear. <laughs> so I do need them. The offense. I need it to be like a shootout. I need it to be back and forth, running gun shootout. So. I'm rooting for that, but as far as just wins, if I'm taking fantasy aside, I don't know. I just, you know, Josh Dobbs' story is, you know, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, and he's a, a former Steeler, you know, always got some love there. So, hope, I hope he pulls it out because he been he's been hooping all season for the most part. So, unfortunately, no Jettas though, which kind of sucks. But mm -hmm. still, I think I think it'll be a underrated, like a low key good game. I, I agree. Solid. I got the Bears in this one. I think the Bears will win by four. Copy. I'll, t I'll take the Vikings by three. I, I, as long as they don't shoot themselves in the foot like they did last week against Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they were in that game. They were that, really in that game. And they were when They should have won. <laughs> like, yeah. They, they got so conservative with the play calling. Like, you do that whole, like, play to not lose instead of playing to win. Um, so, mm -hmm. hopefully they learn a lesson. But I don't know. It's coaching staff. Some coaching staff sometimes is – incompetent facts um so I, I i don't know if that's a guarantee or not but hope at least like you said i think it should be a good game i'm um, definitely gonna be tuning in for sure to wrap up today's episode got a couple of blind rankings got a draft to do um we're gonna be cutting these up into shorts so we're gonna oh no i'll be back oh man Technical difficulties, man. Bear with us. In the meantime, you call off the glass for Seat Geek twenty dollars off your first Seat Geek order. I <laughs> uh, know nah, I unplugged my mic by accident. Oh, um, right, you're not supposed to say that. We're supposed to we're supposed to be professional, bro. Now nah, that was the whole point. It was just a little ad break. We good. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna start off with the blind rankings at oh, first. Um, got a little bit of theme here for the first two. Um, so for the first one. All of these also, they don't have five. There's six. You have six oh slots. Oh, my God. <laughs> six, six slots to work with. I don't know if it's going to make it easier or harder. <laughs> Probably harder. <laughs> but we, about to, we about to find out. I bet. Um, so for the first one, I need you to blind rank these NBA Finals runner-ups. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I like this, though. First one I got for you here, the 2022 Boston Celtics. Out of six? Out of six. The Celtics. I ain't going to lie, bro. They might be like four. Four? Okay. They might be like four, yeah. Let me let me make sure I'm writing this down. Okay, four. Next one I got for you here. Year specific. The 2018 Cleveland Cavaliers. That is the Braun and Kevin Love and Jr. and George Hill and Tristan Thompson team. They wasn't good though. Like Braun was elite, but they like as a team, like they got they got swept. They got swept. They got swept. Should, shouldn't have. If Jr. Smith ain't know to, to score the clock or I mean the, how much time was left, but yeah, they did get swept. I'm gonna put them five just because they got LeBron, and I think that's one of the best versions of LeBron. And I think there's they there probably be a team that's worse than them up there. That is fair. I, I like I like your how you're thinking. I don't know if it's right. I can't tell you if it's right. <laughs> but I, I like that there's some logic going into this. Um, the next one I got for you here, one that's going to be near and dear to your heart, the 2008 Los Angeles Lakers. We lost to the Celtics. Mm -hmm. mm. That is Kobe. That is Powell. That is... Young Trevor Reza, Shannon Brown, young trust Andrew me, Bynum, Derek Fisher, Lamar. Trust, trust me, I already know. You ain't got it. I knew everybody on that team. I knew <laughs> I got the names I, I, better I, than I my know, brain. You know, 
that's for the people. Make sure y'all got y'all got the context here for you. Right, right. Hop in the comments. And, oh my gosh, how did yeah? Now right. You know. <laughs> now you know. Damn, my fandom is kind of getting to me, bro. <laughs> my fandom <laughs> is getting to me. I, I got four and I got five already. Mm-hmm. I I go. Ah, damn, I go two. Oh, two? I okay. go two. Yeah, I go two. Okay. My fandom was getting to me. Next one I got for you here. The 2001 Philadelphia 76ers. Six. I go six. six. Yeah, I'm nice because, listen, they're basically the same as, like, the 2018 Cavs with a worse best player. Hey, like I said, the logic, I'm seeing it. The logic is there. The it's here. There. You, you just might, you might mess me up with these last two. Though. I'm just scared about that. Next one we got here. The first year of the Heatles, the 2011 Miami Heat. Number one, big Number dirt one. takes them down. <laughs> that's a, that's a good one to put up there, though. I see that's a good one. I'm putting them one though. I'm putting okay. them one because they should have won that if Brown wasn't terrible. So this final team is going to slot into your three spot, and that oh, is oh my god, the 2019 Golden State Warriors. I had a feeling they was going to be up here, bro. Because if they healthy, they would have won, and that was number one. But, but it's a lot of injury. Hey, you but, hey, you make the case. What I what I because I only got three left. I only got the three spot. What I will say is, technically, that team is no Clay, no no KD. So if it's just Steph, I mean, e- honestly, hold on. Even if it's even if it's Steph and like half of Clay because he plays some games, mm-hmm. that's still the three spot because they better than the twenty eighteen uh, Cavs. They're better than the seventy sixers. I'm taking the Lakers over them. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. We good. We up. Okay. We, we okay. won that one. We up. All right, all right. Next one, like I said, a little bit of a theme here. <clears throat> if you This one I have the years pulled up just so, like, I give you the additional context. And if you need me to give you some of the players, I can too. But I need you to blind rank these Super Bowl losers. Oh, my God. This is going to be – oh, this is harder. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I have for you. The losers of Super Bowl 50, the Carolina Panthers. That is the 2015-2016 season. That is Cam's MVP season. I'm going to do so bad. <laughs> this is this <one's laughs> going to be so bad. Oh, man. Honestly, bro, I think I'm going to just play it safe and go three. I'm going to just okay. play it safe. Three. Let me get that down. I'm going to be so bad at this. God damn. <laughs> I tried to help you out a little bit, especially with this next one. Next team I have for you, the losers of Super Bowl 44, the Pittsburgh Steelers. That is the 2010-2011 season. We was nice, though. We was that. We was nice. Y'all, y'all were. We was, what did we go? What was our record? I'm going to cheat a little. I just need to know the record. Is that it? Hold on. Before I, is that, can I just do that or no? No, I got you. Yeah, they're twelve and four. Lost in the Super Bowl um, to the Packers. That team, yep. That team. Let me pull up the stats. Ben Roethlisberger, obviously the leading passer. Rashard Mendenhall, leading rusher. Um, or yeah, leading rusher, leading receiver. Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace. What a throwback name, bro. He was nice. Uh, he was nice. Uh, he, he had almost 1,300 yards receiving. Heinz Ward and Keith Miller and Emmanuel Sanders um, on this team as well, um, as well as Antoine Run- Antoine Randall L. I'm going to actually go four, though, because were the Panthers better? Than- I think the Panthers-, the Panthers won like 15 games that year. They did go crazy. Cam was just a monster that he year, bro. He was different. I, I'll go four. I'll go four. Just looked up Cam Newton on Pro Football Reference, and apparently there was a Cam Newton that played in the NFL from 2005 to 2006. It was what? a DB. No stats. <laughs> no Random. stats. <laughs> Random. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they went 15-1 and one that year um, and lost in the Super Bowl to Denver. That Carolina team did. Yeah, I'll put the Steelers at four. Okay. Next one I got for you here. Uh, one of the ugliest Super Bowls, uh, Super Bowl 52 losers, the Los Angeles Rams. That is the Jared Goff Super Bowl Rams team. Six. Six. I think six. Yeah. But I got three. I got four. 
Oh, it's yeah. out. Mm-hmm. You got five or six open, as well as one and two. Damn sure ain't one and two. I'll tell you yeah, that much. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you going to have someone worse than them in the Super Bowl? I'll go six. Six is fair yet. I can argue. Three. I can argue five or six. I can argue that. Mm-hmm. Next one I got for you here. Another ugly Super Bowl. Super Bowl 48 losers, Denver Broncos. I knew it. Yeah. This was the year. They got Molly Watt in the Super Bowl. I fell asleep during the Super Bowl as a kid. Yeah, no, nah, I feel you. This that one was bad, but the team was nice though. The team they were. Was, was it? Was that the year that uh, uh, Peyton threw like fifty touchdowns? Fifty five for two. They're two. They was nice, bro. That offense was. That was like the whole like offense versus defense. Like, let's see what's really you know what I'm saying top offense, top mm-hmm. defense, and the defense absolutely demolished them. So what are you going with them two? Yeah, I put them two. So I got five and two, yeah. five and one left. Yep, five and one. Next team I got for you is the last year's Super Bowl losers, losers of Super Bowl Fifty Seven, the Philadelphia Eagles. <sighs> they, they're not. Like... <laughs> Five for one. That's what we got. Um, bro, you have someone better. Than, you have another like top team on there. I know you. I don't know. I know what's coming. You don't know what's coming. I know for because you did not say a single Patriots team yet. And I think you have a, one of them up there. So I'm going to lose. I'm going to say one because no, they're not. Oh, this is tough. Damn, this is hard. Uh, got to make a pick. So I have the Steelers at I have the Steelers at four. Four. Oh, I got. It. I'm gonna put a one, bro. They was one. It's, it's gonna okay. be wrong. I know it's gonna be wrong. I know for a fact it's gonna be wrong. The last team I got for you here is not the Patriots, but they lost okay. to the Patriots. Losers of Super Bowl Fifty One, the Atlanta Falcons, who blew a twenty-eight to three lead in the Super Bowl, and at five. I could argue. I could argue that a little bit. I think. I think the list is is, is that, decent. That's one of the. That's one of the worst straight up Super Bowl performances. That's fact. Forget they rested. They were <laughs> up twenty eight to three and lost. <laughs> yeah, no, they yeah, they they booked. Pack them up. Pack them. Up. I think my list is decent. I think I'd make some a little bit of changes because you could argue the Broncos a little higher. I think you could. I, I think my for a blind ranking, I think I did solid. I, no, I'm not gonna lie. This this is a pretty. I don't know. Like you said, you could argue about Rams being last, whatever. But like, hey, this is a good list. This is a okay, good list. Okay, okay. I thought I was gonna do terribly. I, I thought I was gonna do horrible. The last blind ranking I got here. I need you to blind rank these NFL MVP seasons. Oh boy! The first one I got for you here, and again, still six options. First one I got for you here, 2019 Lamar Jackson unanimous MVP season. That's unanimous, though. I, that got to be. Man, unanimous MVP. That, bro, Lamar was looking like the video game, bro. I got to put it. I'm so scared, bro. I got, I'm so scared. I, I really want to put it. Too. I will say all of these are like it's not like I'm reaching back into like the 90s. Everything is post to really. I think the oldest one I got is 1967, post, <laughs> like mid 2000s. So it's like you think okay. about that time frame. Okay. I'm. A, I put it too. He's unanimous. I put it that he was unanimous. I put it too. I, hey, you ain't, you ain't gonna get no arguments out of me. I will put it too. Rolls reverse, I might have put it one. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't never seen nobody play quarterback position like that. Facts, bro. That that play where he did the spin cycle oh. on the Bengals. Oh my god, bro. It's ridiculous. No one like Willie Sneed. Like, come on, bro. What are we doing here? <laughs> no receivers, bro. <laughs> None. Yeah, now nah, that's two. I'm putting that two. I'm I'm standing on that one. Okay. Next one I got for you here. 2012 Adrian Peterson all I'm- day AP. I knew that was gonna be up here. I knew for a fact that was. He was a. He was a. He was a beast, bro. Went for two thousand off a twenty. Wasn't wasn't that year off the torn ACL? Um, say twenty twelve. No, 
It wasn't? Um, I don't think so. Or he, he did play 12 games a year before, so maybe it was. He did have a crazy fast recovery. When was he that, came yeah, back. yeah, that's yeah. what I said. I think he tore his ACL and had the craziest recovery and then went off for like 2,000. Oh, that he, he did get – um. he won comeback player of the year. Wait, no, hold on. He, no, he came second in comeback player of the year. So, yeah, it had to have been a year. Um, but he okay. won MVP that year. Uh, yeah, 2,097 yards, um, averaging six yards a carry, 131 yards per game. That's three. That's crazy. That's impressive. That's that's three. Just off the <laughs> fact that he's a running back, that's three. That is wild. Um, we just talked about it for a little bit. Next one I got here, 2015 Cam Newton. Superman Cam. He was solid. He, he was... I put that solid. He was going. No, nah, no, nah, he was crazy. You know, he was different. I'm not. I'm not. I, I didn't mean to say solid. He was. He was different. I will put it though. Honestly, I I put it five. I put it five. Five. Okay. Yeah. Thirty-eight hundred passing three, yards. Thirty-eight hundred passing yards. Thirty-five touchdowns. Ten picks. Um, and then on the ground had one hundred thirty-two rushes for six hundred thirty-six yards. 10 touchdowns. Um, this is about five yards per carry. I'll put it five. It's still okay. an insane season, though. Ridiculous season. Yeah. Next one I got for you. Last year's MVP, 2022 Patrick Mahomes. He had a really good year, but it wasn't even his I don't that wasn't even his best year, was it? That his other MVP year was like. I mean, maybe that was because that was his first one. I don't remember the exact stats. I know it was something crazy. I played. last year, yeah, last year he did five thousand two hundred fifty passing yards, forty-one touchdowns, twelve picks in his first MVP season. He did five thousand ninety-seven yards, fifty touchdowns, twelve picks, six. 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 Okay, got two left. You're leaving. You got one, one and four open. I like I like having those two slots though. I like that. I got some I flexibility see. here. Yeah, I definitely see the strategy. You the see first what I'm doing. bad one. You, first bad one you see you throwing it to her. <laughs> 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 that one, no game. Uh, next one I got for you here. 2006 Ladanian Tomlinson. Four. Four. Okay. How about that four. Yes. That's behind Adrian Peterson's. I don't know the exact stats, but I think AP's is better. Yeah, yeah, that was the year he broke the touchdown record. He had um, 1,800 yards rushing, 28 rushing touchdowns, which is still he, crazy. To what? Look at. <laughs> what? That's yeah, bro. insane. It's, that is um, this season is crazy. Oh my god. Yeah, it's uh, that's ridiculous. He added three ru- three receiving touchdowns and 500 receiving yards to go with it. 9.1 yards per reception, 5.2 yards per carry. 28 is, bro. Yeah, I probably had w- more touchdown rushes than like mad quarterbacks. <laughs> like that's ridiculous, yeah. bro. Oh yeah, that's, was, that's still four though. He was first team All Pro, Pro Bowler, Offensive Player of the Year, and MVP back when he was not trying to split up that award. That's nuts, though. That season is crazy, bro. That season is crazy. So this next one you here, could this argue is that your, You definitely could. This next uh, one here is your number one slot. Oh my god! And that is gonna be 2017 Tom Brady. Mm, what was that? For 4,577 4, passing yards, 32 touchdowns, eight interceptions. Nah, I failed. I failed. That wasn't, that's not one. <laughs> that's, that's not one, bro. I'm sorry. That's not one. Uh, Damn. And that was, that was also the year that they lost to Philadelphia in the Super Bowl. That definitely is not one, bro. I, I know I should have put Lamar one, bro. I was like, no, and Nanavis throwing a Willie Sneed. He was. Video game numbers. I know I should have put Lamar one, bro. Damn, that's crazy. That's a tough one, though. That's a tough one to blind rank. That it is hard. Honestly, if I was more well versed on how crazy Ladian Thompson's season was, I probably did a little bit better. But even then, I only had two slots left. Damn, that's tough. Still definitely solid. First two, you definitely, definitely kind of crushed those. Not gonna lie, but it'd be fun. 
I love they Juan do. Regis. And they about to go crazy on the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last thing before we get out of here again, getting a little bit more of that shorts TikTok content. We're going to be doing a draft. And at a time where we spent a lot of time on this podcast talking about the young and youthfulness of the NBA, how good the talent is, we're going to go in the complete opposite direction. And we're going to do a draft of only players 35 and older. And we're going to do six-man lineups, five-man star lineup, and a six-man. Um, and I'm going to ask you now, I kind of think we should eliminate LeBron from being drafted. <laughs> yeah. Solely because there's three players that are like miles ahead of everybody else, and someone would get two of LeBron, Steph, and KD, and that feels like it, you immediately would win the draft. It wouldn't so even I feel be like fair. we should just ban LeBron, even though he's <laughs> the oldest player. Um, just out of fairness sake. Yeah, no, I'm with that because that's that. Okay. Nice. So now we're going to be doing a draft of NBA players 35 and older minus LeBron because he's a cheat code. <laughs> um, and I'm going to give you the first pick. All right, man. Give me stuff. It's, it's that simple. Give me stuff. Right. Hey, I said there's three people. Without LeBron, there's two. You take Steph. I'll take Kevin Durant. As I expected. Okay. So. Now I'm the looking, draft begins. <laughs> right, right, right. Now the draft actually starts. Okay. So if I'm looking at this, right, mm -hmm. I'm seeing the people. I see it's, some, it's still some quality, quality Very players. Very quality here. players. I'm going to go Brooke Lopez. Oh, That's wait. what I was going to pick. Hold on. Should we do Snake? Or should we do it that way? Or should we just do like back to back and forth? I think it's fine to do back and forth because of no LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So I'm going I'm to do, do Brooke Lopez. Okay. Um, let me look. You took Brooke. Um, give me, give me Al Horford. Give me Al Horford. I like that. I definitely, I like that. I like that. I like that. Now we get in. Okay. Okay. We get the bigs yeah, out the way. Now, yeah. <laughs> now we, in, we in the nitty gritty now. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm not going to draft him because honestly, I think he fits better on your team anyways. I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> oh, this is tough. This is tough. I could just recreate the Warriors. <laughs> you could. I don't think I want to, though. Damn, these dudes old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> these dudes is old. Yo, bro, these dudes is old. I think this guy still got some, got something left in him. Some gas in the tank that he still got some, <laughs> some grease in him. I, I think he still got some gas in the tank. I'm going to go maybe, maybe unconventional. I'm going to go Jeff Green. Jeff Green. That's a good pick. I'm I'm, a, I'm, I was trying to sit on him for a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Jeff Green. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Jeff Green. <laughs> Yo, I need the we need a like a Cam and May sound effect. <laughs> like an A yo. A yo. Um nah, I, I was thinking I could maybe get him in one of the later rounds. Okay. Um I got Kevin Durant. I got Al Horford. Um Honestly, of the people left on the board, this guy might have the most gas left in the tank. So I'm going to go ahead and just take him and reunite what was the young duo out there in OKC. Give me I Russell knew. Westbrook. <clears throat> I knew it was coming, man. I knew it was coming. It was only right. Honestly, it was only right. It only made it sense. It was. It only done, made sense. They done put every single iteration of that OKC three <laughs> together besides that one. Yeah, they need to reunite at some point in their career. Yeah. Squash right. the beef. Facts. I mean, this guy's still scrappy. Honestly, this guy defensive rating right been up there. He been, you know what I'm saying? He's been scrappy. He been solid. But I don't know if I want him in my two spot. But I think he might have to. Hmm. I ain't gonna lie, we might go straight offense, bro. Give me Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon. Give me That's Eric Gordon. Another person I was trying to slide. Yeah, give me give me Eric Gordon, bro. I'm straight. Okay, okay. So I got I got KD. I got Al Horford. Got me the spacing. So I got Russ. 
Okay, I need to round this, this roster out. I mean, look, what we got to work with here? What we got to work with? Um, it's a couple of different ways I could go here. Definitely a couple of different ways I could go. Some options. It's definitely some options. I got two different people in mind. I don't think either one of them are a bad choice. Um, dang. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with. He's old, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they all <old. laughs> shoot. Um. Hmm. I have to take it too long. Give me on a team with Russ, KD, Al Horford. Man, give me PJ Tucker. Yo, he was going for the straight scrappiness. I respect it. <laughs> give me PJ Tucker. He stand in the corner. He don't need the ball, so we don't got to worry about that. Space the floor. And at age 38, it's still dive on the floor. <laughs> you always use the hustle on the team. That's never mm-hmm. not needed. So I got I got Steph. I got Brooke Lopez. I got Jeff Green. I got Eric Gordon. Hey, bro, ain't he the vet in my locker room, bro? 38. You know, he been around the block more than these these young bullies, 35-year-olds on the roster. He the vet, all right. I tell you, he the vet. <laughs> uh, I bet. So we're going to slide. We got two more spots. We got. Oh, I mean, I can go a bunch of different ways. I think I might want. Man, give me. Give me the. I think I might take the outlet passes. I might I, take. the. I might take the. You know what I'm saying? I might take the charges. Give me Kevin know, up. That's who I was debating on PJ Tucker with. I was going <laughs> back and forth. Okay. Um, need one more guy to fill out the starting five here. I might actually draft my six man now. I'm not gonna lie. I was thinking about it. I swear I was. Cause it feel kind of egregious that he's still on the board right <laughs> now. So I, I, do, I do gotta take CP3 Christopher Emmanuel Paul with my <laughs> fifth pick. Cause it's crazy that he slid this far, but it is what it is. He was he was gonna be my next pick. If you didn't take him, I was definitely sliding at the at the six man. He but. definitely gonna be my six man. But, but I, I I got another good six man right here. Give me Derrick Rose. Slide, slide mm. Derrick Rose. We cool with that. Derrick Rose will spark off the bench. I'm okay. up. Little, you know what I'm saying? And now I need one more player, technically for my starting lineup. Need me a little wing. I got two, three options. I'm looking at. Um. Ooh, I didn't even think about Danilo. Fourth quarter crypto. Yeah, you, know, you see, he he's still up there. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it ain't the lie. fourth quarter. Danilo. Uh, ugh, Danilo. Danilo solid. Wes Matthews still got a burner. If you did have a burner. <laughs> Joe Ingles crafty. That's who I think <laughs> I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna <laughs> take Joe Ingles. He still be getting minutes with that. <laughs> You do that Orlando Magic team look old, but hey, he out there, he's shooting, he's spacing the floor. They need spacing. That's what right. our team needs. We need spacing. We got so hold on. Let's let's go through the starting lineups. My star five. I got Russ at the one. I got ooh, I didn't even think about that. I got Joe <laughs> Ingles at got Joe Ingles at the two. We tall. <laughs> it's a big team. Russ at the one, Joe Ingles at the two. KD at the three, PJ Tucker at the four, and Al Horford at the five. And coming off the bench is my six man, one of the, if not the greatest point guard. Ask them not. <laughs> I'm about to say, whoa, there, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of the best, if not the best, floor generals there of go. all time, Chris Paul. Uh, I like that. I like that line. I got Steph at the one. I got Eric Gordon holding down the two spot. I got Jeff Green at the three. I got Kevin Love, the outlet passes at the four. I got Brooke Lopez at the five. And off the bench, I got D Rose, man. So, okay. Okay. Uh, let's, let's, I don't, y'all let us know which team is better. Cause I, don't, mm-hmm. I personally, I don't really know. No, it's, it's tight. It's tight. Y'all better go ahead, drop a comment. If you've seen this on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, drop a comment. Let us know what team you think won. If you've seen this on YouTube, do the same thing and subscribe to the podcast. First of all, if you're watching this video, on the full podcast, we didn't wait through the whole two hours and 24 minutes. 
you're a real one. If you're mm. watching this individually, go ahead, like it, subscribe it. We appreciate all the support. That is going to do it for episode 40 of the Off the Glass podcast. 40 episodes deep. 10 more till we hit the 50 mark. Half a hundred. Crazy. We find we might honestly hit 75 plus where we get to the NBA playoffs. Crazy. Crazy to think. And that'll be a full year uh, of the Off the Glass podcast. We appreciate the support as always. If you're listening to this on audio platforms, go ahead, pre-download the show. Drop a five-star rating, leave a review, and then go ahead, head over to YouTube, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and then go ahead and follow the socials that you see there at the bottom, at Off The Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off The Glass Podcast on TikTok. As always, I'm Billy, that's Dame, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.